Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas for continuing coverage of this year's APA World Pool Championships. I'm your host, Jason Bowman, and I'm joined by the Hall of Fame legend, the striking Viking, Ava Lawrence. Ava, for the fans of really high-level amateur play, we've got a treat in store for them today with the finals of the Masters Championship and $10,000 first place prize money up for grabs. Always Masters is the cream of the crop as far as our skill levels go, and the two-time defending champions are They're out of here. Right out got wiped out. So these are the two standing, and I saw one of the teams play because they beat one of our players from the Coastal Carolina in one of the matches earlier here. And these guys can play, and I have no doubt their opponents can also. So before we meet our finalists in the Masters Championship, let's give you a quick breakdown of some of the key rules here. APA U.S. Amateur Championship rules apply in the Masters Championship. That is a combination of eight ball and nine ball. Masters teams may consist of a combination of male and female players, maximum four players allowed on a roster. Each team is going to choose three players to compete here in the championship match. There is no skill level limit in the Masters Championship as this is a non-handicapped event. There is no coaching allowed, and each match is a race to seven with eight games of nine ball, five games of eight ball. The first team to win two matches will be your champion. Now let's meet our championship finalists. We have from Dallas, Texas, the team of to the moon, and from Aurora, Colorado, the boom. And again, they're going to be competing for $10,000 this afternoon. The players are ready to get started, so let's take you down to the arena for the start of this year's APA Masters Championship. And at the table is Tim Larson from To the Moon. He won the lag, and we'll have the break. His opponent, Greg Romero, the team captain of the team Boom, has opted to start in the eight ball set. To the Moon defeated the Cheesinators out of New Mexico in the semifinal round earlier today. I like that name, the Cheesinators. Boom to the Moon here with us tonight. Boom to the Moon. To the moon, Alice. Yeah, the honeymooners. There you go. My perfect opportunity for me here to have been out there. Oh, wow. Starting out. Great opportunity of starting out. And yes. That'll bring Greg Romero to the table here. Again, he is representing the team Boom. They are out of Aurora, Colorado. They beat a team called Kick Shots out of Kentucky earlier today here in the semifinal round. Full house here today in Pool Dog Arena. As folks have come down to watch this finale in the Masters Championship. surveying the table here. Yeah, surprising miss.
surprising miss there right off the bat by Tim Larson. Did not see that coming. Greg taking his time here. Great opportunity here for Greg to take this first important eight ball point. Again, this is a non handicapped event. No timeouts. Most of these guys don't need a lot of timeouts. This table, obviously, it would have to be really an unforced error for something to happen here where he did not get out. That would really surprise me. He did not get perfect on this four ball for sure. The fact that he's jacked up over the nine. He would have loved to be able to just a little bit more of an angle to be able to get straight on the seven, obviously to hold it there for the eight. It's tough for us to tell if he's got an angle on the four ball or not. If he can just get over past that nine, he's good to go and should be able to get this first rack. No problems. Now, it could turn out to be a costly miss early. First shot, great break. Everything looked great for Tim. Careless miss. Greg steps up, and not only is he going to run out here, but then he's going to have the break. And you start out with five games of eight ball. And then you go to nine ball after that. Well, Tim Larson ended up with the first break because Greg got to choose the format after the flip. So he won the flip and he said, I want to start with eight ball. Yeah. Well, Tim won the lag. And took, the lag, took sorry. The break. Yes. Greg decided on the format. But yeah. just goes to show you, Ava, I mean, here at the Masters Championship, little mistakes have big results. Oh, huge. Somebody can punish. And with the winner breaks too, Jason, I mean, somebody can, you know, exactly. for, for, you don't have, just have to, break and run out but while we've got just a sec Ava we want to hear a quick word from our friends at pooldog.com We're back again. Greg's going to step up and break here in game number two after an uncharacteristic miss, only because we are in the Masters by Tim Larson in the first rack. So Greg's up one nothing with a break. He's going to the side break here. Needless to say, incredibly important for these guys to make a ball on the break so they can control the table and control the series of balls they're going to get. All right. Stripes it is.
His main issue is obviously these two right here. Oh, I'm sorry. He made one of each. I apologize. He made it one, one of each, so he's good to go. And that was beautiful. Perfect breakout. Look at the shot he ended up with on the two ball. And his only problem now that he needs to solve is the three, considering that the 14 ball is blocking that pocket. Can't really get to position on the three right now, so the two to the seven, I would think, is what he's going to grab so he can come down and do something with that three ball. That's one of those balls you don't want to leave for last. These guys aren't hoping to make a few balls. They are always planning for the run out. To make all the balls. You bet. So he wants a bit of an angle here on the seven. He didn't quite get it to be able to get on the three unless he can make if the seven ball goes in the corner. He can still come down and do something with a three. If not, he's going to have to leave the three for last, I would think. Ava, I would say this is by far the largest crowd we've seen here in Pool Dog Arena. A lot of folks now standing as well. Still a few seats here and there, but not many. No, but I mean, you want to... If you're here and you're going to watch one match, would that not be the Masters? I mean, yeah. obviously, if you have friends out here, and yes, watching all the finals is exciting, but the Masters, not only are you going to get some some drama here in the Pool Dog Championship Arena, but you're going to see the best players that we have, the best amateurs out here in Las Vegas for the championship. Okay, again, the key ball th it being the three ball. Let's see what this is a really important angle that he's going to have to get on the four. I would think he's going in and out and try to come to the to the other side of the four. Well, he tried to come. Hmm, he tried to come down to make the three ball in the side pocket. He was tr he was aiming for right here, did not get there, and he is snookered on the four ball now and has no shot on the three. So that was not what he had hoped for. I figured he was going to come down about here on the four ball, play position so that he could have come down for the three next. Right now he's looking to play. It looks like he's pl trying to play the three ball off the ten into the corner pocket. He pulls this off. He deserves this rack for sure. <laughs> this has to be hit just right. I mean, on the millimeter. But it's all he's got. There's no bank available. There's no defense available when you're playing a guy named the, the quality of Tim Larson here in the Masters. So here it goes. Just don't forget the cue ball. Nope, it went into the nine. Just hit it a little bit too thick. And we'll get another chance to see Tim Larson at the table. Been a little while. It That's has. the way it goes here at Masters. Once you sit down, it could be for a while. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Especially once we get to the nine ball portion of this. <laughs> it's very important for these guys to win that last, the fifth eight ball game before you go into nine ball, having the break going into the nine ball portion. And I'm sure that Tim has managed to let go of the mental agony of knowing, remembering that he missed that first shot with an open table. He is back in gear again. And this is the team that I ended up watching quite a bit because they were playing one of my teams from the Coastal Carolina APA area. They ran into to the moon and they were playing real solid all players no surprise but to make it all here into the finals is quite the feat you know these guys can play 
Oh, he wants that cue ball to come up a little bit. Got to remember, these tables have been playing real fast every day. Hotter, hotter than the Dickens out here in Las Vegas. Very, yeah. very dry air. Finally got some rain today, though. Yeah, unexpectedly. All of a sudden, with the rain that came today, the rails are going to be a little bit more alive, and the table has slowed down <laughs> quite a bit from yesterday, both here and in the main tournament rooms. So slight adjustment had to be made here by the players. And our friend Tim looks like he's in a hurry here, huh, Jason? He's not taking any time. Balls are open. All you got to do is stay in on the correct side of the ball, find your pattern, and just uh, loosen up that stroke. Yeah, he's managed to rebound nicely from the unforced error to start that first rack. Pockets the eight ball on the side. Ties this match up at one game apiece. Again, race to seven. That's our second game of the eight ball set. We'll three, see three more games of eight ball before they switch to nine ball. Very similar to our U.S. Amateur Championship format. There you see the trophies, the four trophies for first place on the left. Those are the championship big ones. And slightly smaller, slightly less prize money. That's on the right. $10,000 is uh, on the line here in this championship match. $10,000 in the ultimate bragging rights, I guess. <laughs> yes. And there's bragging rights in all of our formats, both, you know, but when it comes to, I guess, the singles championship that we have at the Pool Players Championship in May and this one with the Masters where, you know, this is as good as it gets. You have no excuses. There's no can't whine about somebody's handicap and you you know this is just all out pool these are the ultimate bragging rights i would have to say are you suggesting someone would whine about someone else's handicap no it seems preposterous no 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 i don't know what some of our you know <laughs> keyboard cowboys are going to do today because they can't complain about skill levels table conditions oh yeah <laughs> of course now we got the diamonds so yeah there's there's that it's going to be hard the weather since all the Masters yep. players out here are loving it. Yeah. The weather. The weather. The seating. Somebody being too good or somebody playing like crap or whatever it is, but we'll tune all that out. So I'm just here to enjoy some great pool. Learn something. You learn something every day if you're paying attention. There's that center break again. Oh, the 13 ball was going straight into the pocket and seven ball just hung up. Not as pretty of a table. You can see there's a couple balls broken. I mean, um, that are bunched up together there. Other than that, the table looks good for either. So the job now with an open table is to try the best ball to break those up. Where can I get the easiest to deal with the two and the 13? And he may even be able to make the 13 if he just taps this eight, uh, 14 in. I'm not sure. If that's the case, then he's good to go. Again, the Masters final is the best two out of three. First team to win two will be your champions. And this is Greg Romero of the Boom out of Aurora, Colorado at the table. And this is the team that beat the two-time defending champions. Boom knocked out uh, uh, Whiteout. The Whiteout, yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, some, that's something to brag about right there, whatever happens right. in this match. That's a tough team. We'll see where he's going to go here. I'm not sure if he's straight in on the 13 ball or not. He may have to just kind of draw into the 8 ball here a little bit. Oh, he was straight. 
All right. Which way do we go here? Shooting the 15, you're going to be coming around in here and having to avoid all this. This is a tougher shot, obviously, but then you can come up this way and shoot the 15 in the corner. I kind of like shooting the 11 ball here. The last thing you want to do is kind of go into any balls. Whatever you do, you want to avoid them. So overcut this a hair into the top part of the pocket. Need to avoid the six. I'm not sure he can do that, but it seems like the angle is severe enough to where he can get hit, thin hit. Oh, he's going 15. He doesn't like it. Okay, got to go around these balls. Anytime you go into them, you're taking a chance of bad things happening like that. Oh, he got a shot on the 10, but <coughs> that's, you know, what is he going to do? Shoot the 10 in the side? Seven balls got the corner blocked, and taking a chance on making both is always risky. And even if he shoots it in the side, what kind of shot is he going to have on the 11? So we're in trouble already. Not what he wanted. Like I said, when the balls are open, do anything you can not to go into them. Try to find a path where you don't have to collide with anything because it's almost never good news. All right, just gave up the table again. That's twice in a row now. A little bit issue with getting out of the trouble. Again, those of you aspiring to play here someday, the one thing you need to work on is never, ever leave trouble for last if you can possibly avoid it. Try to figure out a way to find the path to deal with your issues, tied up balls, balls that don't have a natural pocket, balls on the side rails, end rails, so you don't have to travel with the cue ball too much if you can avoid it. Not many blockers out there now. Now it's looking pretty good. Now all he's trying to do is find his pattern that he wants. A lot of different options. And this is Tim Larson of To The Moon. They're out of the Dallas area. The one guarded ball he has is the six ball. But that should be no problem. If he can get straight on the five, oops, get straight on the five, he should have an opening to make the six down here. He's just going to go ahead and tap it and get on this seven ball, I would think. Or three ball. What is that? That's the three ball. Although he looks like he's loading up. It's going around. Pockets the one in the side. Uh, <laughs> Knocks that six ball over, but yeah. now he's behind the eight. Yeah, he can, so he can, can make see. the three. Yeah. yeah, he should be good to go. I would think he was going to play this in the corner. Yeah. Problem solved? No. Did he snooker himself on the two? He's got an... Oh, he's got the five in the side. You know, it's funny. A lot of people think that these guys, as good as they are, that they don't feel nerves. Yeah. Now you're, you know, you're <laughs> right. a master's player. You're yeah, a 7-9. Yeah. Supposed are you, what to are make you? every shot all the time yeah. in front of everybody. Well, that same thing with pros. Like, right. how can pros, you've been pro for 20 years, how can you possibly feel the nerves? Well, trust me, you do. Oh, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Got to really appreciate these guys' skill level, though. It's yeah. pretty phenomenal. Two in the corner there for Mr. Larson. Now to the six. 
It's been interesting walking around, too, in the tournament room. You knew when there was a massive, massive amount of people standing around and nowhere to sit. There was like an, an intense master's match yeah. going on. So that was smooth all sit the way around. The corner, yeah. No problem for Mr. Larson. About to take a 2-1 lead here. Eight ball falls. He will have the break. Three games of eight ball down, two to go. Again, this is a race to seven. Great look here at Pool Dog Arena, full house, as we said. Which was to be expected. Mm hmm. We may see even a few more because we're told the live stream is down momentarily. So that may result in even more people here in Pool Dog Arena. Yeah. <laughs> they got to come watch the old fashioned <laughs> way. We actually got to be here to see it. Hopefully, we'll have that up here momentarily. Yeah, there's been some weather. I mean, it's not very often you're out here and you can, you know, say the weather interfered with the, uh, with the live stream. But. Um, when it does, it does tend to wreak havoc with. I was a little surprised to wake up today and see rain. Yeah, it's me too. I haven't looked at the weather. Throw open the, <laughs> the old curtains and the sun just comes boom, blasting you right in the you face. You feel you yeah. feel the heat right yeah. out the yeah. Just looking out the glass, but not today. I was down here bright and early. We had a one of the local TV stations, local Fox affiliate, came out and. Did some live feeds from here at the World Pool Championships. Talked to our new team from Singapore. Mm -hmm. Or our first team from Singapore, I should say. A new and first. To make it to Vegas. And yeah. Then, and they had some fun with Dr. Q. He did some trick shots with the, the reporter. The Energizer Bunny. Yeah. He's incredible. All right. Solid break there. No love from anything, though. It's uh, another dry break. There's that two in a row, right? Yeah. Dry break no. in the last one, too. Let's see if it's time to shake it up a little bit and move the cue ball around. You can't, you know, do the same thing over and over and expect different results. So when that happens, move it around, move it to the side, the other side, the move it to the rail, do something different. Especially at this level, the break is so important. The control of the table. And Greg's going to choose the stripes here. Either one would be a not a bad idea. He's going to go ahead with the stripes. And again, what you love to see in a rack of eight ball when you start out is that nothing is tied up. There's nothing major. It's about playing smart and controlling that cue ball. Starts out with kind of a funky angle here to get on the 11. He could go across table a little bit and play the 14 ball. He could come around this way and play the 14 down here. 14 is obviously also available in the side pocket if he just wants to hold it right about there, come off the rail a little bit. go I mean you almost have to run out the rack here Ava to <laughs> to win a to win a point here and there unless you're gonna play some defense but this seems is one like of that's those all the, the yeah. opportunity is just once at the table and yeah you better make the most of it well that shot right there got him into kind of the sweet point in this rack where unless there's an unforced error by an crazy miss or something, he should definitely be out here, 100%. Oh, oh, maybe not. He's got the 10, or did it freeze up on it? Yeah, he's got the 10 ball, or the 11, so he's good to go. Don't want to go 11 right now, I wouldn't think. I would definitely go with the 10, but 
I know we've mentioned our referees quite a few times and the volunteers and that, but how much pressure is there for a referee in a match oh, like the horrible. Masters? It's horrible. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're gonna well, for any match. That's, yeah, but I mean, that's a. I had a, one of our teams from North Carolina that I was just watching them play before this, and sometimes the pressure just gets to you. And one of my guys, instead of shooting the cue ball, he hit the six. Oh, wow. So now, and, and shot a ball, and now the referee had to come over and kind of solve that for them. Yeah. And, you know, and it's a lot of pressure. It calls. Especially calls. here in the arena, right in the middle, where yeah. they're more actively involved in the calling of exactly. the match than maybe in the main tournament room where they have to be called over to watch a hit. Right, right. Here they are watching every hit. You know, someday when we're like the size of golf, we could have a referee at every table. But we have do not have that luxury. We got so many refs here. Shout out to them for handling the pressure from all these, you know, pressure cooked absolutely matches and pl players being on the edge and everything else and making hit calls day in day out. Couldn't do it without them though. No, from all over the country. We appreciate all of them. One of those m the most thanks thankless jobs in sports. All right, just a little tap here. Just roll it up. We'd like to have an angle to drift over. Yeah, this way he can just stun the cue ball up here towards the 11, and he should be uh, good shape. The only place he does not want to be is straight in on the 11. He wants to have a little bit of an angle to come out for the 8. About 6 to 8 inches off the rail would be perfect. Well, I think I see four open seats uh, in here, so six maybe, in case you guys are in the main room. <laughs> yeah. <There's not laughs> this is your there. chance. It's usually standing room only in Masters, especially when it gets starts getting close to the end. Oh, boy. 11 in the corner. He didn't like the corner spinning it in and leaving himself that shot on the eight. So I think he was trying to get down for the side. I'm not sure why. A little tougher shot on the eight, but he should be okay here. Romero right. pockets that eight ball, ties this match at two games apiece as we move to the pivotal fifth game of the eight ball set. And like Ava said earlier, this fifth game of eight ball is a big one. You want to be able to take that break into the nine ball set. You bet. I want to make sure we give a shout out to all of our sponsors. Of course, we've talked about the good folks at Pool Dog, the namesake of the championship arena here. But we also have Action Cues, Aramith Billiard Balls. And the Diamond Tables, over 350 of them here at this year's APA World Pool Championships. Appreciate all of our sponsors and their support of the event. If you're not currently an APA member, now is also a great time to get involved in the leagues. You can go to our website, poolplayers.com, and get signed up. Put you in touch with a league operator who will help you get on a team. And just like that, you will be off and running. Best decision you've ever made in your life. I always say that, you know, we always talk about APA family, which is literally what it is. But I always say it's kind of our church. Not that you don't necessarily yeah. don't go to regular church, right. but it's, it's literally that feels like you're a big it's family. Community. Everybody knows yeah. everybody. And. A lot of people get surprised. A powerful break. Nice break. Eight ball was moving. There is the seven. Seven ball drops. 
Well, not as pretty as it was before, but this is definitely a doable run out. And a very important rack here. And you bet. Nothing better than having control of, of the table. Here's going to be a little bit of an issue with the three ball there. And his first shot with going to make this four and come across. Did he get, well, it's not too bad. He's got the five ball. This is, I think the next shot is going to be the one. If he shoots a stop shot here on the five, and then he has a chance to shoot the three, but that's when thing can, things can go haywire because he's going to go into the stripe balls there. And that's where you need a little bit of luck. All right, here we go. Oh, he's going to ball. He's going to go in from, um, you know, to the balls from that direction. That's actually a better shot because if he can go into the balls now, it's going to pretty much guarantee him a shot. He's got two balls to get a shot on the six and the three. I just don't know if he can get there. Maybe he can get all the way down for the six. A lot of work left to do here. It's definitely not a gimme at this point. Welcome back to those of you that are watching the live feed. We did drop the feed there for a few minutes. But you are now back to watching live coverage of the APA Masters Championship here at Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas. Quick recap of what you missed. Greg Romero took the first game after an unforced error by Tim Larson. Mr. Larson rebounded pretty well, took the next two games. At a dry break in the fourth, Mr. Romero capitalized and ran out, and we are tied 2-2 here in the fifth game of the eight-ball set. At the conclusion of this rack, we'll move to the nine-ball set. So as we said a couple times, big rack here. You want to carry that break into the nine-ball set if you can. Yeah, and, you know, as expected, not expected, but uh, we expected there to be a chance that could be trouble any time you... Try to get fancy. He missed going into moving anything around, but he also has no shot on the six ball. He's going to have to really come with one here. Oh, he's going to try to kick it in. Forget about defense here. He knows what Tim's got up his sleeve, so he just does not want to give up the table. Tough shot the way this angle is. Oh, that was nice. close. Yeah, I don't think we've not seen a defensive shot yet in this match. No. I don't think we've seen a player twice at the table in this match. The way the table so far has, rack, I mean. yeah, so far that if the tables open up, the opens up the way this one has, you're not going to see too many defensive shots. And it's it's kind of hit and stick behind the ball if things go awry as you're running out. But other than that, I think it's going to be mostly offense all the way. Again, perfect world. You do not go into anything. A little bit of an issue with the 15 ball, but if you get on the correct side of the nine, you don't shouldn't have to worry about it. Oh boy, holy moly, that's not it. Kind of moved on that a little bit, did not stand completely still and just almost steered it in. A 
Jackson brought up a tester on the 14 ball. Maybe he can get perfect on the 9 now. Let's see if he's got the right speed. He wants it to slow down. Oh boy, not quite. He went about 6 to 8 inches too far to be able to deal easily with the 10 and 15 right now. He was shooting for getting right about in here. If he gets the severe angle that he's going to be stuck with on this 10 ball, he's still flirting with not getting a shot on the 15. So still some work to do. It's doable, but not easy. And again, score is 2-2. Two to two. Been a great match so far. Been an error by each player. I would say one. And then uh, it's been about it. Other than that, it's just been a battle. I had a question about their skill levels. I don't know their skill levels, obviously. Not used here, but if I had to guess, they're probably both nines, sevens Se and nines. Seven, nine, maybe seven, eight, but, you know, depends on the team. Who's on the team? These two, I would guess, are seven, nines. All right, here we go. This is a big shot right here. It's too much of an angle to spin it. He's going to have to go into the 15 ball. Oh, yeah, trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. And that is one difference between, let's say, these guys, they're so good, but let's say a pro player. Obviously, cue ball control is going to be a little bit finer. Break's going to be a little bit better. The position is going to be a little bit better, but also really knowing which part of the balls you're going to hit if you have to break something open. You know, same thing when you kick at it, hitting it, what part of the ball that you're going to hit to be able to create a safety not just making a ball, but actually creating what you want to have happen. And those are the little things. It's kind of like in golf. You've got some, you know, thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of players that are almost pro quality. You watch them hit a ball and you're going, how can you not be on the pro tour? Well, the difference between that and the pros seems slight, but it is giant when it comes to championship pool. I see a jump shot here from Tim Larson. Again, jump cues allowed in the Masters format. Yeah, I guess those are the biggest differences. No timeouts. You can use jump cue and you can push out in nine ball. There's not enough Waffle House songs in Vegas, Jonathan. That's Jonathan Neiman. Jonathan Neiman. <laughs> the much... The mullet man. Yeah, Hi, the more uh, trimmed up eight ball classic champion. All right, jump cue. Let's see if he can get over this clean. Now, how about that bank shot? Is it's coming. It? It's going. It's going to run out of steam. And nope. It's going to make Just it <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> not out of the woods yet, but he is at the table. The crowd love that one. Tim's all smiles as well. Yeah, he was hoping for a little bit Just more little love as far as the shot, bit. but you know what? He got lucky that went one rail. He was definitely trying to make it into the corner. Put that so one on the highlight what? reel. That was a great shot. Yeah. I mean, it's not a horrible, even at their level, it's not a horrible choice. Well, I don't know. Not a horrible choice just to roll into this ball. I mean, the best that he's going to leave Greg now, if he does, he's not going to gain anything by making the shot unless he goes into now, which is a really tall order, being able to make that go one rail and up and break those open. I would just roll up. You can see an overhead shot here. Mm 
Just roll up on this ball. There's no reason. What, I mean, he's looking to make it or looking to come with a Houdini shot here and maybe break the bulb and get some kind of shot on the 15. Just roll the cue ball up, freeze it on the rail. The best that Greg's going to have then is, uh, is a bank or a severe cut on the one, but then where is he going to go? Six balls tied up. There you go. That's a first definitely defensive shot of the hat. match. First yeah. time we've seen one yeah. match. You're excited now, aren't you? Yeah, defense, defense. Did you learn something there? Did I learn something? Yeah. I learned not to play either one of these guys, what <laughs> I learned. Yeah. That's what I learned. Yeah. Brings Greg Romero back to the table here. This is also the first rack where we haven't seen a player basically run out after they had, you know, we had a player break and then another player run out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of been the way it flowed, those first four racks, but a little more back and forth here in this fifth game of the eight ball set. And I need to answer, Jeremy, there was no disrespect whatsoever, but a lot of teams, they were asking about the player on the team, not these two players, but the teams. A lot of times you can have a, skill level five being the captain of a team and getting his buddies who are much better we have had that happen several times they never hit a ball in the championship they play during league nice shot but they don't play when they come out to you know come to the local championship to get here or when they're out here so i, I can't say that i think that every member of each team is a seven nine but i'm pretty sure these guys are and the ones that you're going to be seeing play today so I wanted to clear that up, that there was no disrespect whatsoever, trust me. All right, there you go. There's no shot on this three ball. I'm thinking a hit and stick is about the only thing he can do. He should be able to hit a pretty solid hit on the three. Leave the cue ball right down in this area here. Maybe even be able to go up and freeze it up on the eight. Bridget, there are Karens even. I like the Karens better than the keyboard cowboys. I like. <laughs> I feel, but I feel bad for people that are like named Karen. Like. Yeah, I know. There's the a lot of nice Karens. On them. But in this case, I agree with I agree with Bridget. Why not just enjoy some great play? You think anybody's naming their kids Karen these days? Not too I many. Probably not. Oh, nice shot, nice shot, nice shot. Is he going to get some love for it? Yeah, nice. baby. He does. I don't think he can make it in the corner, but he can make it in the side. Another half an inch, and he would be looking real good right now. He's going to have to make the cue ball travel around the table. Speed's important here to get back down for the eight. I don't think he can hold it. Big shot here. Nice. Can he get all the way down? It's heading that way. Ooh. Oh, not mm -hmm. done yet. <laughs> and like we were talking about, this is a big, big, big game. Whoever wins this will break first in nine ball. And being winner breaks, their opponent may be sitting for the rest of the match.
considering that Greg has two balls left on the table. I don't see him playing a defensive shot here. He's going to have to go for this bank. It's a makeable bank, especially as close as the cue ball is to the eight. Once he finds his angle. Nope, no good. Oh, uh-oh. Great break for Greg and Team Boom. So got a little work to do, though, Jason, because of the angle he has on the six ball. There's only one place the three ball goes unless you go into him. Raymond said yoga's paying dividends. I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. When he climbed <laughs> yeah. on that table. I thought he's... Tim's a flexible guy there. A lot of fun styles, too, when, yeah. you know, people get in funny positions. Seen a surge in viewers over the last few minutes. If you're just joining us, you're watching coverage of the APA Masters Championship, all part of the APA World Pool Championships here in nice. Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas. This well, is Greg Romero at the table. Looking to finish out this rack. He so hit that almost too well, Jason. He did hit it too well, I think, because he needed to kill the cue ball there to hold it for the three in the corner, and he killed it so well. With that draw stroke, and now all of a sudden, he can't, he can't make it. Can't make it. I see Greg pull out the jump cue now. Be interesting to know. That's one thing I would have I was meant to ask these guys if they played in a qualifying <coughs> tournament to get here. Some of the areas are small enough where they don't have league, or if they played league and ended up advancing through that. A lot of these guys have known each other a long time. Obviously, they're usually the the best player in the pool room, kind of thing, and. Neighboring pool rooms, bars. Always great stories how teams get together. All right, jump shot here over the eight. Real steady, short backstroke, just pop it over. Oh, no. All right. Tim's Not a out hanger. of his chair, yeah. Yep. He was licking his chops there. Sure. Opportunity now for him to finish out this eight ball set with a victory. And the break as they move into nine ball. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Well, like I said, no hanger by any means, but he got lucky. He got lucky. No good shot for Greg, but you know what? Anytime at this point you're at the table, you just got to be... Happy that you have a shot at it. You can whine about how lucky your opponent got, or you can just say, you know what? I'm at the table. The guy should have been out, and I'm here. We shall see. There's your backwards bank, obviously. Or you can just tap this and try to play that little perfect position. No, he's going, he's going for it. Trying to get the perfect speed to hide it. Th that cue ball behind the three is tricky. Here we go. Just got to watch where that cue ball goes, too. Oh, baby, how'd what you hit shot. it? Nice shot, Greg. Big time shot there for Mr. Romero. Now shooting on the eight ball. Beautiful shot there. See if he can finish it off and get the first draw first blood in the nine ball portion of this Masters format. And he did. That was a sigh of relief we saw from Greg and his team, I might add, the team Boom out of Colorado. Well, they take a 3-2 lead here in this race to seven. 
Greg's going to take a quick break, and while he does that, we're going to take a quick break here on the broadcast. Be back in just a couple of minutes. Jonathan Neiman at the table, or as some have affectionately referred to him, the mullet man. And he, and he did tell me that he's going to cut it all off if he wins today. Really? So, oh, yeah. And he's got it. Jonathan Neiman, Wilmington, North Carolina, your eight ball classic champion in the red tier, folks. How's my hair looking? Your hair is looking good. In fact, uh, I believe Ava and Jason were talking about it, that if you won, you were going to cut it. Uh, I did say that. I did say that. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> it's so worth it. <laughs> All right, we are back here at Pool Dog Arena. Greg Romero will have the break here, now leading three games to two. We are in the nine ball set now. Again, this is a race to seven. $10,000 on the line here in the Masters finale. Strong break, but a scratch. So that Let's big advantage he had, he just gave that up with that scratch. So back to advantage Tim, huh? Even though he's down three to two, we're in the nine ball portion now. And a and wide open table. These guys can rack up racks pretty quickly in eight ball, I mean in nine ball. JB Senior tuning in. Hello, Dad. Tuning mm -hmm. in from down there in Florida. Oh, cool. Hi, Dad. His name's Jerry, so he's JB Senior. I'm JB Junior. Mm. That's how that works. Yeah. In case you were wondering. <laughs> 
And this is Tim Larson at the table for To the Moon, looking to even this matchup at three games apiece. Does not want to get straight here. Just a little bit of an angle will do. And this is the ball he doesn't want to get straight on into that side. So I and always remember to always go over and check your angle. Then if you fail getting where you want to be, so be it. But don't get the incorrect angle because you're lazy. And he did went over, over and look, but he failed. Look at this. He's Looks like he's almost straight in. If he is, he's yeah, he's in trouble. He can't get across now. Scott doesn't think the payout's enough for these guys. Well, Scott, feel free to book a convention space, bring in some tables, and <laughs> run a tournament, and yeah, pay out whatever you like, sir. And a lot, like I said, there's only so many leagues going on in this country, and most of them will just pay and entry fee in their area and get to go and uh not not a lot of money allocated towards it like it is eight ball and nine ball needless to say we have leagues playing across the country all the time got somebody tuning in from greece i like that that was a nice recovery there by tim oh that's cool Maybe get some APA going in Greece. You want to take a trip over there. And Greece is great. Nine ball goes for Mr. Larson as even this matchup at three games apiece. He will have the break in the second game of the nine ball set, or second rack. Great look at Pool Dog Arena, full house today. Everyone wanted to come down and see this high-level play. Tim, a member of To The Moon, they're out of Dallas, Texas. His opponent, Greg Romero, and his teammates on Boom are out of Aurora, Colorado. Some of the stats for this year's event there. Most notable to me is the 1.3 million total payout mentioned 10,000 for first place here the runner up is going to take home 5,000 all right Tim back to break again he's tied up 3-3 race to seven big advantage obviously anytime you have the break here and especially in the nine ball format Tim did a good job he was heartbroken when he realized he looked for the perfect angle on the six and he got dead straight in but made a smooth shot down the rail instead came with it ran out and we'll see what he can do from here one of the balls rolled off a little bit and he's going to have the referee fix that rack while we look at the payout here yeah the two teams that finished in third place today they each tied they took home three thousand apiece you can see we pay down all the way through 65th. Raymond, I don't know if we can do the arena setup in your house, <laughs> but I tell you what, we can do the arena setup in your hometown of Orlando in November. How's that? There you go. See what I did there? Very of course, slick. Of U.S. Amateur Championship moving to Orlando this year. I may have co to come down for that. You for should. The US it's a great event. Yeah. Great event. It's going to be in a great place. I'm excited. Mickey Mouse will be there and... <laughs> All the other Disney characters. Orlando's a fun town to go to. If you're uh, going out for fun and tourist, a lot of traffic. Other than that, it's fun. All right, solid. Corner ball goes. One so ball goes. One. Two balls sitting pretty. We only have this to deal with right here. It's amazing how these balls tend to find each other with all the space on the table available for them. It's going to have to go into these now, but how? to make sure you clip the closest part of the six ball, you're going to take a chance and easily you see the table layout here, please. All right, 
and see if it goes into them. No. The danger there was if you clipped that side of the six, you could end up getting snookered behind the eight. So he's going to wait and deal with that later on. Three in the corner. No, important angle here to get right. There you go. He was asking how many APA players in the country. So we have right about 250,000 active members. That would be the United States, Canada, Japan, and we've mentioned our new league in Singapore. I heard the other day we've just moved ahead of where we were in membership right around 2019. So that's a great sign that Mm -hmm. Things have come back really well post COVID. I think a lot of people were timid. I know in our league in the coastal Carolina, we've had a lot of you know not not a ton, but a lot of people saying, "Hey, I haven't played since before COVID, and I feel like I'm I'm comfortable. I've, I've missed it. I want to come back." Yeah. So, all right, so spin on this. Oh God. Oh, he got lucky. He doesn't have much here, but. Any time that you go into the problem area, in this case, shoot, using the ball before the, the, sh the ball you're trying to get on, that's a dangerous thing because even if you would have hit him, you don't know what you're going to get unless it's an easy breakup and you can control what part of the ball is the cue ball going to hit. And not only did he go into the monocular shot, but he didn't hit it at all, and now he's in trouble. Amen, Laura Berg. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> Give well, her a free T-shirt if she's down here. There's a lot of people with little lives that don't have anything better to do <laughs> than to pick on these players, to pick on the referee, to pick on the tables. Claude, something's got to be wrong why they're not here winning. Oh, no. Oh, boy. All right, so Greg Romero with a chance to once again take the lead in this match if he can finish out this rack. It's kind of the way this match has been going. They've both been very capable of really making some stuff happen and, and but little things not coming with the breakups, not you know getting a little bit out of line here and there. So they're kind of giving racks over to each other a little bit. Both playing great. They're great but players, said, but they're not machines. No, sir. They're not robots. They're still amateur players. And even the pros, I mean, the pros aren't machines either. So... There will be the mistakes made, and that is what the drama is. M one thing to watch an exhibition, it's more fun to watch drama, don't you think, Jason? <laughs> All day long. Greg Romero pockets the nine in the corner. Yeah. A bear. Make a bunch of noise. Get people to say, can you guys quiet down? Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, probably be the... I'd be the seven because that, that's a lucky number. Uh, grinders, uh, Shane for sure. Yeah, nine ball in this tournament. Yeah, for sure. All right, referee preparing the rack. Again, we are in the nine ball set. We played five games of eight ball. We play up to eight games of nine ball, is that right? Five and eight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Race to seven. Well, advantage, Craig, obviously, not only being ahead four to three, but if you can control the cue ball and make a ball on the break here. Well, 
couple of balls on the break and nice shot on the, on the one. one yeah. Yep. Looks like he's straight enough to be able to hold the cue ball for the two in the corner. He would love if it was straight enough for him to draw back to play or enough of an angle to follow down and come back up and play the two in the side. This is the key shot right here, getting, sh making this and getting correct on the two, and then he should be home free. Looks like he's going to try to follow it down and come back up. Control the speed. Somebody's asking about the Masters format. It's a non-handicapped, the only non-handicapped format that we have. A few different rules, variations, but... It's a combination of eight ball and nine ball. As Greg cannot pocket the one there. Yeah, it was a tricky shot there, Jason, because he had to put load it up with some right spin, the angle he had to be able to come out for the two in the side. So that was the key shot, and instead he's now giving it up to Tim, unable to pull that off. Tougher shot than it looked with it, all that juice he had to put on the cue ball. And now it's... Should be all Tim. Boy, they're trading racks, aren't they? Back and forth, back that and forth. Are. Some other variations of Masters. You can use a jump cue. There's the push out in nine ball. There's no timeouts allowed. What am I missing, Ava? Is that all of them? No timeouts. You can use a jump cue and push out a lot. That's yeah. not it. Yeah. No time. Yeah. And, the, and obviously the combination eight ball and nine ball. No handicap. So. Most league areas, I guess, offer masters. I don't know if they offer it as a division, but a lot of times they may have a tournament, that kind of thing. Just to qualify a qualifying tournament, yeah. Some players, and just depends how big the league is. A lot of our players I ho at home, I know they know that their team is probably not going to beat the best teams. Some of them just play for the experience to be able to play, mm -hmm. learn something, and get that education looks like he's gonna have to draw this straight back and back up table and to the end rail and back out again put some juice on this one nice smooth stroke and back and forth we go back Absolutely. to tied up again <coughs> Race to three at this point. All nine ball left to go. Tim will have the break in this next rack. This is a winter break format. Trying to get some pumping up here from his teammates. Tim's going to ask for a quick adjustment to the rack, it looks like. Tim and his teammates on To the Moon, they are out of Dallas, Texas. Their opponents, Boom, out of Aurora, Colorado. And it was the Boom that dropped the Boom on the defending Champions knocking them out. The white out, the two-time defending mm -hmm. champions. Eliminated them. And you can see we still have two more championships to bring you folks here from Pool Dog Arena this week. Tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. It's going to be a late one for those of you on the East Coast, but uh, we will have that coverage. And then, of course, the Nine Ball World Championship on Saturday, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Tim's on the other side of the table now. Mm, no. Let's see where that five ball is. Here's, I 
will it pass here? It looks like it on the overhead, but not when I look in at the table live. That's the only issue I can see here. If he makes this one ball, the 2-4 is a very makeable combination. It's all about the position he's going to get after that. You obviously want to be about on this side of the table so that after the makes the 2, the 2 can come over here. The cue ball stays there for a shot, if that's at all possible. If you cross over, it's just going to be a little bit more work. Big shot here, not just to make the, the ball, but that shouldn't be a problem. But the position on the two, he's trying to get them both out of there. And we got a shot on the side. It's kind of on the 50-yard line, Jason. He's looking at the side. He's looking at the corner. All depends on where he wants to be on this three. And he hasn't given too much worry about this five ball. So it tells me that it might sneak by the six ball. Doesn't want to go into anything here if he can avoid it, needless to say. Less danger if you shoot the two in the corner, because then you can go, you know you're not going to go into anything. This is touch here. You kind of kill the cue ball. A lot of low left. Well, nope. And again, even if he'd have made it, look what he did to the six ball here, which could have been avoided if he shot it in the corner, but. He missed it, so that changes the angle, too. We're going to see now what Greg's can do. Like we said, it goes back and forth. Yeah, back it really and has. Forth. It's I think it's been like that the whole yeah. one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. I Tim don't know. won two in a row. Greg won the first, and then Tim won the next two, and then I think it's gone back and, and forth. And it's been like since, that yeah. ever since, yeah. Nice smooth shot there. Five ball is now in the wide open. Six ball needs to be, something needs to be done about the six ball because it does not go down in the this bottom left corner. Mm, looks like he's going to have to settle for a bank shot here on the six. Ooh, that was a nice smooth stroke. Does it? I wonder if it gets by this nine. That would uh, sure be an advantage for Greg right now. Yeah, he's looking to cut it. Referee knows it's close. Not that close, but he's still going to get a good vantage point and make sure there's no foul involved. Should be pretty obvious. Good shot. That cue ball to slow down. Sweet. Crowd approves.
And ladies and gentlemen, there is a packed house in here. The front row is saved for the team. Other than that, every seat in the house is taken, and we've got a pretty good standing crowd here, too. They know it's starting to get down to it. I can see a couple of the guys from the whiteout here in the back. You got Jeff Abernathy. And They're already planning next year's comeback. Yeah, so. scouting the competition. Ooh. Yeah. All right, Greg Romero on the nine ball with a chance to take the lead again. Again, huge shout out to all of our sponsors, including our table. This diamond table has been playing great all week. They also, we also had them in May. A lot of people excited about them, even people that were used to valley tables because these are not the pro cut diamonds. They're kind of somewhere between the pro cut diamond and the valley table so that we can kind of middle it for all the players coming from all over the country and other countries like Canada. Singapore, um, Japan, and that way you kind of get it in the middle a little bit. And they've been playing exceptionally well. A little bit uh, slower today than they have been for those of you that have been watching before because we've had rain here that's going to bring some humidity in. Table is not sliding quite as much as it was yesterday with the dry, dry conditions plus the table's starting to get some wear, which also takes away some of the slide. Big break. And, oh, it's still a little tricky. It's not hanging. It looked like it was going to be kind of one of those cakewalk outs, but no such thing. A thin hit on this one is going to send the cue ball down table. As he has the guts to just slow roll it and hold it for the two in the side. Low rolled it and got it. No, there's no sudden death in the finals. Some folks commenting about the spelling of Tim's name. We are aware that it's S-O-N, but we were going with what's listed on the score sheet, which is S-E-N, so... Unfortunately, there's only so many places we can fix that during the match once it's in. We have updated the scoreboard here, but. Nice, smooth, all the way around. Sweet, perfect position right there. Greg can kind of smell it now. He's up 5 4. Let's see if he can break this curse of going back and forth. One getting ahead. Then tying the other person, tying it up. It's been kind of the story of this match. Eight ball is going to look in to see what he's going to do here because that's not laying the way you would prefer it, obviously. Need to make sure he gets an angle here if he's going to get on the short side of the eight. He doesn't have a lot of room to play around with. Start to slow down. Mm. It's not over <laughs> yet. <coughs> uh, for those of you asking why we don't have the room and the table mic'd, 
It's because of the live stream, and we had there's music the in music. the background that we cannot control. That is controlled by the by the casino. So, and it's also more comforting for the players that are playing. And with that, we don't want the stream to constantly be cutting out. We wish we could. We have talked about it a lot. If there's any way around it, but uh, Facebook doesn't like it. So. See if we can get there. Gonna be a little careful of hitting the sweet spot on the eight. Oh, overcut it. We overcut it. Cut it too much. It changed the angle. It's played it in this part of the pocket, and that was kind of the problem there. But he's got a pretty easy opportunity to play defense here and sneak that cue ball up behind the nine, banking the eight ball. Unless he goes for it, he's got a chance. It's a tough cut, but he can go for it. Okay, big shot here. This would put... Greg on the hill, if he can pull off this shot and come down, up and down the table, and get right on the nine. And there you got a real still. And he made an, oh, I thought he had it. That's what we were talking about yesterday. That may have gone in, or the day before, when the table was still sliding more with a new cloth. This time it did not. He took a chance and went for a tougher cut. And instead, we're back to the tie-up again. So 5-5 five, five <laughs> going in. Let's be honest. That's what everyone yeah, wants, right? Yeah, it's exciting. Nail-biter, hill-hill. It's exciting for everybody except for Greg and Team Boom and everybody at home rooting from Colorado. But the crowd likes it. They get some excitement. I think this one has a good chance of going hill hill all the way. We are evened up. Five games apiece. Race to seven. Tim Larson will have the break once again. You're watching coverage of the APA Masters Championship here from Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas. Love this new set. I love the red. It's... um. It's pretty cool in here, you guys. I've been doing or playing on ESPN, but I've been doing commentary for many, many years. And the set, the everything you guys have done here, the production team, it used to be just kind of a monitor, and we, we got some headset and, and yeah. wing it. But it's, it's gone. changed a oh, lot. Oh, wow, it's come a long way. It's really fun being in here. The energy, scary for the players when you first walk in. <laughs> Especially since, you know, these are amateur players that may never have been in a situation like this. Yeah. I'm sorry that these Masters players may have been in something similar, but most most of your handicap on the uh, handicap part of the tournament never been faced with this kind of pressure. TV lights are bright. Started with nice. 384 teams in the Masters Championship, and these are your final two. Left standing. A lot of little issues here, but I don't see this being too much of an issue. Can I get the overhead? And what you're going to see, I believe he can come on this side of the table, make this three ball off the five. Just get the right angle here. Doesn't want to hit the eight. Yeah, that, that'll work. Let play that carom off the five in the side. Cue ball is going to come out right about here, and we may have a new leader after this because this table is laying pretty. Just about 90 minutes into this Masters Championship, still in the first individual match. Again, it's best two out of three. Tim Larson here looking to put his team on the board first. The team of To The Moon. He 
can run out this rack. That would put him on the hill, needing just one more game. Last challenge here is this one. A little bit of right spin to bring it up. Too much. Ooh. Oh my gosh, Tim. Can you see the frustration the classic there? Classic one rail scratch there. He just probably hit the six ball a little thicker than he expected. And that's a big turn of events wow. there, Ava. Just as it looked like Tim Larson would be on the hill now. Yeah. Greg Romero. Barring some unforced error, will finish out this rack. Advantage Colorado now. Absolutely. He will be on the hill with the break. Huge turn of events there. Eight ball falls. All right. Tim's job now is to just let it go. Just as quickly as possible. Not to think about it again. Next play. We all make mistakes. He's sick to his stomach right now. I get it. You know, it's best two out of three in mat Masters and the matches, and getting that first win is obviously a big deal. And um, you kind of can see it slip away there with that scratch, but it's far from over yet. Greg Romero with the break coming up. Would love to get that nine ball moving. Great look at the Masters trophies here. Serve as kind of a constant reminder to these players what's at stake. Greg doesn't like to waste any time. Grabs that cue ball and he's ready to fire away. All right. See if he can stay at the table here after the break. Ready to control that cue ball. He did. It's the one and the six. Is the that fall. two book going to stay in front of the side? It sure did. Oh, wow. On making this two ball here, if he can drift down a little bit to about here, that way he'll have the perfect angle making the three and coming out for the four, and he should be good to go in this rack. But like we said, it's, <laughs> you know, one little flinch, taking your eye off the ball, jump up a little bit, go too far with the cue ball or too short, and all of a sudden an easy run out becomes tricky. Important to have the right speed here, and he did. Oh, too far. You okay? I think he's all right. He can cheat the pocket a little bit. He came a hair too far, but I think he can cheat the pocket just enough. Even if he has to draw the cue ball straight back and take more of an angle on the five, which is fine. He doesn't want to be straight in. He wants to come out a little bit for the seven. There you go. Oh, he got straight, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's easy when you're sitting back watching from here f in the stands at home on the stream. It's go, well, he's yeah. fine. He's, you know, well, okay, fairness, so he's not they, perfect, they but they he's fine. They make it look easy. They make it look easy. Yeah, but when the pressure is on like yeah. this, nothing is easy unless you get just perfect. So he's left himself tougher than he wanted. Still obviously way makeable, but he knows that he's taking his time on this. He just took a deep breath, and sure, he should be out here, but for those of you who've never been in this position before, there's no guarantees. There you go, mistake number one. 
not an easy shot on this. It's much, much tougher than it could have been. So you never know. You can feel the pressure in here right now. And I saw Tim kind of look up like he sat a little bit straighter, realizing there might be a yeah, shot he's going to be able to get back to the table. And once you get a little bit out of line, it tends to get worse and worse and worse. Unless you come with a big shot. And that's what he's hoping now. Backwards cut on this seven. One of those both makeable and missable shots. And let's see what happens here. Way to hold it together, Greg. Nice shot. Nice shot. Two balls away for victory. From, from victory for Greg Romero. Now just Ugh. nine ball yep. remains. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Let that drift down a little farther, and the cue ball is on the rail instead of coming off. So, you know what? It's not over till it's over. I'm sure this is going to be in Craig's favor. He just stepped back up again and going, oh, crap. Yeah, <laughs> Craig. <laughs> Well, I thought he was going to fall over for a second there. Another Huge sigh of relief. Greg Match by Greg Romero pulling it off there in the end. Tim Larson played great. A lot of nerves, I think, in this beginning, this first match. Greg Romero and the boom strike first there on the board. One more match and they'll be your Masters champions. We're going to take a quick break, folks. We'll be back in just a few minutes with continuing coverage of the APA Masters Championship. And this is really going to help your game tremendously and truly put you to the next skill level. Hey guys, I'm Fernando Kohler, also known as Venom. I'm a professional pool trick shot artist, but also a league operator for APA in Las Vegas. There we go. Thank you. Uh, this one is using actually 10 balls. So what exactly is a tangent? There's, in my opinion, three types of bridge. The closed bridge, the open bridge, and the rail bridge. We're gonna start with the closed bridge. Now if you practice this, it's really gonna help you to go from a two to a three. In this episode today, we're gonna cover how to go from a three to a four. Let's get into it. The more you're gonna do it, see, as you can see, I touch sometimes a little bit of it. And eight, right? So to technically have eight zone for 10 balls, so you have a little bit of room to spare. I really hope this was useful, and I cannot wait to see you for another video. Later, everybody. What was your favorite part about this year's Junior Champions? Because I worked so hard for it. Meeting new people. This is all that I've gotten to learn so far.
I'm your host, Jason Bowman, and I'm joined by the one and only Florian Venom Kohler. Florian, today we have four championship matches to be decided in this year's junior championships. We're kicking it off with the green tier. Congratulations to Jocelyn. She is your juniors champion in the green tier out of Dallas, Texas. I want to thank everybody for watching me, and I want to thank my mom and my coach. Cue oh ball holds up. Sebastian Bernal, Lynn Haven, Florida is your... All right, we're back here at Pool Dog Arena, continuing coverage of the APA Masters Championship, all part of the APA World Pool Championships here in Las Vegas. At the table is Tony Piazza of the Boom, his team leading 1-0 in this best two out of three match. These players racing to seven in the second match. His opponent, Richard Stanley, seated. They're starting in the eight ball rack. We'll see five games of eight ball and up to eight games of nine ball. Rarely do you see anybody start with nine ball. It's almost every single time that you fight your way through the eight ball and then hopefully have the break when the nine ball portion starts. It's a nice layout he ended up with here. Again, this is Anthony Piazza from Team Boom out of Colorado. Yep. Goes by Tony. Tony Piazza. I'm going to draw this up smoothly. Hmm, he left himself a bit jacked up here on the 13 ball. Raymond, the referee does wear, or does <laughs> prepare the rack. Sorry, we had a question about the rack and his hat. Yes, and he is not allowed to wear a hat in the championship match. So if you're used to seeing Tony with his trademark hat. It is sitting on the table next to his teammates. I think he looks lovely without it, so... There. And he's looking at possibly going for the 15 ball bank. Being jacked up on a ball like that, right up, you know, over that five ball, it's real close. And he doesn't gain much by it either. Even if he were to make the 13 ball, he wouldn't have much of a shot. So he's going for either a severe cut on this 15, or he's going to go ahead and bank it. More cue ball control if you bank it, obviously. Nice shot. Got the t 10 ball available. No, well, yeah, he does. But the 14 and 9 are something to contend with. No pocket for either one of them. 6 and the 3 ball has that blocked. So he's going to probably try to go into the balls right now. Making the 10 ball. We can see the table. So making the 10 ball here. If you can avoid the 4, come back up. And deal with the 9 and 14 right here. Mm, nope. No good. Hmm. Not an easy shot to control. You had to avoid the four ball and at the same time try to come up and bust those open. And now looking dark in this situation here. see much of it. He's looking at possibly, is there a possibility for the 914 bank? Looks like it might go long to me, but and the cue ball would have to say a little bit, but I don't know what else he's got. There's really no defensive shot. You just got to try to 
go for something here. Hope to get away with it a little bit. I think he's going to try to make this bank on the 14. The balls are laying spots right here where he can't play really any defense. Ooh, it just came up short. Hit it firm enough on the right side to where it shortened it up a little bit, but it shortened up too much. And he got a little bit lucky with the nine ball kissing up to the five. I'm just going to make Rick have, or Richard having a little bit more work. He can deal with this now, I think, if he wants to. Six balls hanging in the pocket, so you can just go ahead and make the seven into the rail. Get that nine ball out of there. Hit the wrong side of the ball, though. Luckily for him, the four is right there, but got to really pay attention to which side of the balls you go into when you break them up. It's one thing to just break them up, but you can ensure yourself you have a good shot after that. Luckily, this is eight ball, so there's more than one ball to play for, but that didn't work out at all. So back to table comes Tony. So everybody's calling Richard Rick, so, so I think we're going to go with Rick. Okay. Yeah. Rick it is. I looked down twice real quickly, and I see Rick there Yeah. a couple of times. So I think... Rick, uh, Rick didn't say anything to you when you were talking to him, so I figured no, that he wanted to be incognito do, or well, something, maybe. Is, yeah, because <laughs> we, do, we do ask them, their, you know, verify we're saying their name correctly. Yeah. Of course, Anthony said, no, I go by Tony. I said, right. all right, Tony. Rick did not say anything. Rick wanted to be Richard today. Yeah. He wanted to be official. Sir Richard Stanley. Okay. Obviously, nine ball only has three pockets, so really decide what he's going to do here. Is he going to slam it, or is he going to some, play some spin and go up? Slam it it is, and short. Okay. Do or die. I think you can stop this on the one ball for that shot on the eight. But it's a pretty severe cut. It's one of those where you don't see the pocket. These backwards cuts are tricky, but no problem for Rick that time at least. And first blood is drawn by Sir Richard. I think I'm going to just Tony. call him Sir Richard. I mean, no, Tony. that's Tony. So it's <laughs> Sir Tony. Sorry, Sir, Tony. Sir Anthony. This is like a, <laughs> Sir, we got like Italy playing the UK <laughs> here, you know, kingdoms. There you go. <laughs> Sir Richard and. A lion. Mostly high fives and not, a, not much noise, just high fives and clapping. Eight ball. Um, I guess it just symbolizes winning. Confident. Jeremy Jones, Texas boy. Nine ball. Referee has prepared the rack. Tony's going to give it a quick look. Throw some chalk on the tip. And he's ready to roll. Second game of the eight ball set.
We will see five games of eight ball before they move into the nine ball set. This is a race to seven. Eight ball. Oof. Cue ball. He's lucky yeah. that eight ball didn't go. Yeah. Really kind of hit that funky. So ball in hand now. Rick's shaking his head, knowing that this is there's no real clear way out here. This Where do I go? Slow rack. The table is <laughs> yeah, table is still open, but I mean the beauty with the eleven ball being where it is and the fifteen is that he's got some ch a chance to break some of these balls open, make something happen, clear something out. And he's going solids. Hmm. The beauty would be if he could come out, get position by making this, if you see the overhead, making the four ball. If he can stop right about there, making the one here, they'll have an opportunity to shoot the five, come in the rail, and knock that eight out of there. And then his table is open. So I would just shoot a stop shot here, shoot the five. No. See what he's planning here. Combination, all right. Hmm. We'll try to deal with this now. Is that two ball makeable? I didn't even realize it was makeable there. Let's develop just enough. We can cheat this pocket a little bit. Yep. Well done. Well played, Very Rick. nice. With that messy rack, yeah. Rick made quick work of he just clearing that up, didn't he? he ties this well match done. up at one game apiece. And he will now have the break in the third game of the eight ball set. I like that team name. No, both of to them. To the moon. To the moon and, and boom. boom. <laughs> There's Tony, the way everybody says they're used to seeing him with his There's hat on. There's the hat yeah. and the bangs. <laughs> A lot of people ask why we don't allow hats in the finals, but it makes for awful photography, makes for awful video work. You want to be able to see the players faces and their reactions yeah. and so yeah just trying to you know with everything we put into pool dog arena here we keep it as professional as possible we want to try to give the amateurs the the pro experience ava they don't let you wear hats on the wpa uh, no. tour do they no sir okay, there you go trying to and give them that and and you know dress a little nicer out here you can be a little bit more ra relaxed in the earlier stages and but we like to don't get me wrong. I'm a hat guy. I like to wear a hat. I know. I know. You're not allowed I'm to not wear a running, hat either. I, I can't wear it in the booth, they told me. That's right. It wouldn't go well with these uncomfortable headphones we got anyway. <laughs> Two balls on the break there, both a solid and a stripe, so the table remains open. And if the 15 goes, obviously it goes in the side, but if it goes in the corner, he's got a you know, choice. But other than that, I think I would be going with the solids here and again you know they're all kind of clustered together here but with the ability of these guys it's just controlling that cue ball not to go into them if you don't have to everything has a pocket right now if you play on the correct side of the ball so 
what I've seen so far of Rick and the way he got through that last rack. I have a feeling he has found kind of a path on this one as well. Again, it's important not to be slappy, sloppy with the position play just because see the shot, make sure you're on the correct side. so far Ava this Masters finale has just been a back and forth back and forth all through the first match now into the second match yep yep, yep. have not seen a player get ahead by more than one game until the end of that first match 7-5 right the uh, final score right the first match that's a good shot kind of dealt with that 10 ball there without it having get in the way of the path for the four. So now he can just go ahead and come across a little bit of right spin, a thin hit, thinner than he needs to. He wanted to come all the way and play the five next. Now, yucky. He's jacked up over the <laughs> 11 ball right here. Shooting the one ball is tough enough, but you don't want to come back up here for the five. Going back up, back and forth on the table, that's going to be hard doing from being jacked up. If he cuts in the five, unless he gets a solid hit here on the 11 to stop it right there for the one ball. But it needs to be dead on pretty much. If you hit... The short part of the 11, you're going to be have, end up with no shot on the f on the one. No, that's well. Did he get there? Yeah, he did. <laughs> He's got a shot, though. I know you're shaking your head, Rick, but you got a shot. That could have gone really badly right there. Yes, sweet baby. Look at that shot and position on the eight. How you doing? Nice. Straight done. in. Thank you very much. Impressive job there by Rick Stanley to take his first lead of the match, 2-1. Again, this is a race to seven. And to the moon has to win this match for the finale to continue. If Boom were to win the match, the championship would be theirs. Two more games to go here in the eight ball set. Mm hmm. I don't know where Frank Carbone lives, but the league operator there should be looking forward to having him join Masters because he just said he's better than all four of these guys. Oh, so wow. take that as a challenge, everybody. Got a new buddy coming. We're going to get his team together and show these guys here show them who's how boss, it's done. Frank. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing you out here next year. Four ball goes. No, sir. Try break. And I would think that he's going to go with solids here. They look favorable over the stripes, I would think.
Just over two hours into this Masters Championship match. Got going just after 1 p.m. Pacific time. Day number eight of the APA World Pool Championships. Sure is. I'm keeping count. <laughs> I'm keeping count. Three Two more to go. sleeps. Three more sleeps. Oh, it is so much fun to be out here. I've been loving watching. You know, I run the league in the coast of Carolina, as you know, and I love watching my players every chance that I get and then doing the commentary, watching all this pool. But oh, 10 days in Vegas is a long time. That it is. It's so much fun to be out here, but man. Well, it's a different existence too, right? It's not yes. your normal home routine where you're you know, wake up, go to work, have lunch, come home, have dinner, go to bed, you know, at right. a reasonable time. Yeah, and there's a lot a of people different. you want to say see, so you stay up a little later than oh, you normally yeah. do. All right, the backwards cut here. He went with the stripes instead of the solids and uh not quite handing over the table now to rick rick with a chance to advance his lead to three to one There's really no issues. This is just about finding the way to go. This is maybe the only one if that six ball doesn't go. But he's got plenty of time to fix that. Take a good look at it first. That's the first thing you want to do now. Is if that six doesn't go, where? How quickly can I get to it? How about that? That was quick enough for you. It's kind of made it a little bit more crowded, but there's paths here, especially with the four ball hanging in the pocket. Oh, it just died. Oh, that's kind of an amateurish mistake, if you want to call it that. He hit the that ball too thick with follow and that's just kind of killed that cue ball so whatever he was trying to do with the speed he hit it cue ball's not going to go anywhere if you're going to hit it like that you need to hit thinner on the ball mm. boy is the five ball makeable by the Nine, maybe. Hmm. Again, no defensive shot here. That's going to keep player of Tony's caliber from running out, or at least having a chance to. So. He's looking to play this five ball, it looks like, off the three into the side pocket. Hit about three, uh, a quarter, quarter of the ball, maybe. A third of the three ball, maybe. Sweet. There you go. Okay, still a lot of work to do, and where's his next shot? I think the three ball is makeable. Ref's coming over to take a look. He just realized that's going to be the shot that he's going to have to shoot. Cut on the six ball is it's pretty nasty, Jason. It's not a shot that you're hoping to be left with.
Ooh, Kevin Malley, armchair athletes. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I guess that's a little kinder than a bunch of Karens, I guess, right? Well, it's kinder to the Karens, the real Karens. The real there. Karens. I mean, the, the one shot he's got, if he, if, you know, he could, well, he's going to go, I was going to say he could hit and stick and drift the cue ball behind the nine. Watch That's out. not it. Scratches in the top corner there. Ball in hand now for Tony Piazza. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. One issue on the table here for Tony. He's going to take care of that, obviously, right now, as one should. The only other situation is the eight ball, but I do believe that goes in the side pocket. Once his balls are taken care of, it might, you know, there's a bank available that should be pretty easy unless he wants to break them up. But it, as you can see, I do believe that is makeable right there in the side pocket. How many teams did we have, Jason, in the Masters? 384. 384. When we woke up today, there were four remaining. Now we're down to the final two. Both these teams playing earlier today in the semifinal round. There you got Tony Piazza, Team Boom. And the other side is Sir Richard Stanley of To the Moon. I like calling him Sir I Richard, do. don't you? I do. <clears throat> Rick Stanley with a 2 1 lead over Tony Piazza at the moment. Again, this is a race to seven. Tony and the team of Boom have already won one match here. It is the best two out of three, so if Tony is victorious, the boom will be your champions. Rick trying to force the third and decisive match between these two teams. And this should bring it to a 2-2 two -two tie. Race to seven. Needless to say, well, needless to say, Rick needs, Stanley needs to win this match or it will be curtains because Team Boom already won the first one. Greg Romero took care of that. And Anthony now. Tony Piazza is hoping he can finish this in two matches. We are tied at two games apiece. This will be the fifth and final game of the eight ball set. Important game here. Both these players would love to have the break as they move into the nine ball set. That's true. It's always a big, big game here, the fifth game. Nice shot of both these teams. To the Moon out of Dallas, Texas. The Boom out of Aurora, Colorado. Competing for $10,000. Runner up will take home five. Deep, deep sigh there by Tony. <laughs> Trying to get. Rid of the nerves, get kind of in the zone a little bit, forget about all the people watching in the room. It is a packed house. The people watching at home. 
both of these teams, I believe, are first-time champions, wouldn't they be, Jason? To the best of my knowledge. There might be a player or two that have been here before, I'm but I don't I'm guessing all recall. these guys have won something along the line somewhere. Yeah, Maybe not absolutely. Masters, but but um, I'm guessing they've all found some success along the line somewhere. Nothing. Another dry break. Brings Rick back to the table. He's smiling there. That was a bit of a sloppy position, not what he had in mind, but no harm done. We're trying to find a sweet spot to get on the two. Oh, that's not it. All right, he's just speeding up now. Just going, I'm just going to run him in. There's no danger. He's going to get a shot here. He says, okay, so I'm on the rail, so I'm not perfect. Big deal. Like, I haven't made that shot before. And then just step up and play. And sometimes you just got to do that and loosen up a little bit. And if your plan doesn't work out, find a new plan. All right. Got the job done here. Wow. Took the lead. Three games to two. And Rick's going to have the ever-popular break going into nine ball. It was quite the run out there. Mm -hmm, it was. It's quick, too. Once he sees an opening, he goes. Somebody said, Rick without shorts and Tony without a hat. What's going on? <laughs> Rick with the 3-2 lead. Pull a few balls off the table here. Move into the nine ball set, up to eight games of nine ball. And yes, Team Boom won against somebody was asking team boom actually knocked out white out the defending champions from north carolina yeah that would have been i guess in the quarterfinals maybe they beat in the semifinals a team out of kentucky called kick shots and then to the moon knocked out the cheesinators out of new mexico yeah i think that it was, was in the, the quarterfinals if today. i if i remember right well you know that's the perfect opportunity to plug our friends at CompuSport. Yeah. If you want to see how the bracket has played out here in the Masters Championship, go to compusport.us. They do a great job. It's nice to be able to see everything. And if there's a player that may not be from your area, you just put their name in and you can find them anywhere and nothing. Mm. But no shot either. So this is going to be one of those defensive situations i would think one doesn't it's blocked here it's blocked here i think he's gonna have to play some defense he's got some blockers to get behind might be able to hit just the left side of the one and have the cue ball go between the three and the seven super thin hit on the left side of the one would take him there can also hit the other side of the one ball and send the cue ball to the other side of the table. A lot of balls to hide behind. Nice shot. Well, this one is going to be a tricky hit. The only thing I see here is, I believe, coming this way. Actually, he's going to have to come deeper than that. The side pocket's kind of in the way to go this way. 
if you come too deep, that's, well, we'll see. That's the only shot he's going to have here. Oh, Got yeah, it's there. sweet. Perfect. Ooh, got that nine ball moving <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Good hit. I think it's going to be really, really dark again once he steps up. He's going to get behind that eight ball, I have a feeling. Cindy, yes, the Masters Championship is played on a seven-foot table. All the tables used here at the APA World Championship, seven-foot tables. Mm -hmm. Good defense. He wanted, he was trying to drift that cue ball up to freeze against the eight. And he just drifted it about chalks width, and that was about it. So he wanted to freeze it, so there was no way to kick and hit it. No easy way anyway. Now at least he can jump over the three. He could have kicked a two rail to try for a hit and stick, but he's going for this bank. We hit the wrong side of it, but how about that? that? How about that? There. Can he see but the one? He got lucky. But not lucky enough. He cannot make this one ball, I believe. Somebody was asking about jumping. Yes, it's legal in Masters. In Masters as well as the U.S. Amateur Championship. And that's right. That's it. And I mean, if it's allowed in your local billiard room and you're good enough to jump with your own cue, you can do that mm -hmm. if it's a legal jump. Yeah, you don't make scoop sure you under it. The host location Absolutely. Person. Yeah. Cloth is not cheap, and most, most of our players would have a harder time jumping the ball, and, and it does tear on the cloth if you hit down on it. and. It's kind of like a miscue, but you're hitting down on it, and it does wear on the cloth. So, no, not deep enough there for that safety. First real safety battle of the yeah the day. I feel like. He's trying to get freeze it behind that five. All right, here it goes. It's starting to get to somebody's going to make a mistake at some point. This is a risky jump shot any time that your the object ball is that close and you're going into the rail. If you jump, put a little too much jump on it, which he's going to have to put quite a bit considering where these balls are, he's going to have to get up and down real quick. If not, he's flirting with the cue ball flying off the table here. Nope, stayed on the table, but... Rick is up to bat. That's our next event. Is well, we got regionals across the country in the beginning of October. Yeah. The regional championship. If you want qualified through single sports and you're playing in the regional championship to come out in Vegas in yeah, May 24. And then there is the USAM in That's November. That's going to be a great event. Yeah. Especially if you like this kind of play, this high-level amateur play. Plenty of that to look forward to at the U.S. Amateur Championship. First time in our new home in Orlando. The Wyndham. It's going to be exciting. 
beautiful place from what I can tell. Yeah, we'll be streaming each day at that event, several matches a day. Mm-hmm. It's kind of been a, you know, it was, he didn't even stop and look. Look, I know he seems to be a really fast player, obviously, but he didn't even stop to look like if I make that, what, what what's going to happen next? So he's kind of in a funky spot here. He's going for this. I don't know. The ref is close by. Just make sure it's a good hit. Doesn't look. Ugh. I wouldn't be want to shoot this. Kenneth Lawson. Yeah, USAM has played on nine foot tables. That is the one event that we do on nine foot tables. Nice defense there. You spun that cue ball perfectly. That was a good defensive shot right there. It's going to be a two-rail kick here on this three-ball. If you measure that a little bit, you've got a good chance of making it. If not, at least splitting them open. Oh, he's not going two rails, is he? No, oh, he's going to go one rail across. He would love to hit the bottom part of the three ball and have the cue ball kind of get behind the eight maybe. Split them up. Good shot, good hit. No love though. Well, he doesn't take much time, does he, Rick? Certainly doesn't. Three more balls on the table here. Chance to open up a two game lead. Here you go. Made a quick work of that again. Rick. Starting to find some kind of some his confidence and his tempo now, looks like. Rick with a 4-2 lead in this race to seven. And a reminder that they it's a must win for them right now. Rick and his team to the moon because boom on the first one. Greg Romero pulled that off. So this would make it if Rick does win this. Long way to go yet, but that's going to bring it to 1-1, <coughs> and we'll have one final match, and it'll be interesting to see who's being put up on each side here. Contrary to our regular handicap portion, we don't get to see how many matches each player has played. Right. So we, we, don't, we can't even have an educated guess here, can we, Jason? Or uneducated, if you will. Both teams do carry four players on their roster. Rick asking for an adjustment to the rack there. To the moon out of Dallas, Texas. The boom out of Aurora, Colorado. Final two teams left standing from a field of 384.
Rick is satisfied with the rack, positions the cue ball. Another dry break. Brings Tony back to the table here. Just trying to find a way to get to that two ball with the angle he has. The three ball is in the way for him to come to whip around the table and come back down. So all I can see is if he can put a eh, ton of juice on it. Here's his line where he has to get within. That's not easy with the angle he has on the one ball unless he goes across and back. Steady hand, a little bit of left. Hit it with enough speed to come this way, this way, and back out. One, two, is he going to get there? Off the rail, he needs to get off the cushion a little bit. Good shot getting there. And as long as he's not straight, yeah, a little applause. Come on, people, that was that was a good <laughs> solid shot now. Not quite enough. That's not going to work. This is not easy here. And I guess the four is out enough to where if he can get anywhere in here, he's okay. This angle. He could draw it with some reverse. Put a lot of right spin on. Well, he's going with some left spin here. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. Good shot. Problem solved now. Mm -hmm. Just had enough room. Perfect. Well, no, 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 not really. Eight ball doesn't go in that pocket, so. But he's he should be fine here either way. Pockets the seven in the corner.
Eight in the side goes. And he's definitely not, don't have any plans anyway of letting Rick walk away with this se second match. So four games to three now. Holes within one. And now he will have the break. Yeah, we just all day, have, we have not seen a, either player on either team really pull away. Mm -mm. Been very close. That two-game lead was the about as large as it's gotten. Hashtag APA Vegas on all your social media posts and your streams and all the photos you're putting out there. Pretty cool to see all the different teams that are streaming their matches in the in the tournament room there. Yeah, I That's mean, changed a, a lot over a the years. A camera or it? two, or a phone or two at every table. <laughs> yeah, I like it when I, I see. I like it when I see both teams streaming the matches. Yeah. All right, Tony here with the break. Both players really look loose now. You can tell they're both of them play pretty fast pace once they get into deciding what they're going to do, find the path, find the pattern they want to play. Big deal with this break. You see that cue ball spinning. Ooh. Oh, the two ball. Nearly scratched <laughs> in the side, yeah. <laughs> that was close. Two balls on the break. The one and the seven. And nearly the cue ball. you are just joining us, you're watching coverage of the APA Masters Championship here at Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas. Tony Piazza at the table for the team of the Boom. Pockets the two in the corner. Tony trailing one game here in this race to seven. Chance to even things up. He's trying to find his path here. Doesn't have to do too much. Even if he got straight in, the five ball hanging. Going to afford him to get out. So it looks like he's going to draw the cue ball into the side rail here. Then cut on the three. He's got to really dig in. And that's perfect. Nice. Pink four in the corner. How do you feel about the pink four? You want to start a controversy there? Get all the comments going? I get it because of the detail, <laughs> but I'm such a traditionalist. I yeah. don't get the whole glove thing. Yeah. I don't even get the whole, you know, all the new shafts. And before that, that when q -Tech first came up with it, it was the other wrap thing that they were had going on. I'm a traditionalist. I like maple shaft that has been dried adequately it you know yeah. it's solid i like it's kind of a lesser tape i'm old i'm old-fashioned i don't i don't do all that finagle stuff so yes i like a purple four ball the way it was supposed <laughs> I to thought be thought i might open pandora's yeah. box there but fires at six in the corner I know that people who have sweaty hands, I get it, the glove helps.
but it worked. You can have just a little wet towel too. You just touch if you get start sweating. That helps too. Powder is obviously never a good thing. Whoever started that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Nice. All right. We are all tied up at four once again, folks. Race to seven. Tony will have the break. Just when it looks like somebody's going to start to pull ahead. A bear. The opposite happens. Make a bunch of noise. Get people to say, can you guys quiet down? Boom with yeah, already do. one uh, victory in this best two out of three. I'd be the seven because that, that's a lucky number. Uh, grinders. Uh, Shane for sure. Yeah. Nine ball in this tournament. Yeah, for sure. Tony looks, well, both players look really solid. Now they just want a shot. Like a shot shot or a billiard shot? I'm thinking shot. Shot Tequila, shot? Tequila, whiskey, what do you want? <laughs> oh, sorry. Are we back on? We're back on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I know we're back on. I know we're back on. I thought you were calling oh, for yeah. a shot. You knew all along. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got you. I'll take both. I'll take a shot <laughs> and a shot. Maybe some sake later. Sake sounds yeah. good. We'll yeah. do some shots of sake later. <laughs> tequila. Oh, Oof. Carrie wants us to go to tequila. Oof. I actually enjoyed tequila, not like a shot, but just to kind of sip with some lemon. And That's lemon. the right kind of tequila. Lemon, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, I, the whole worm thing, I don't understand, but the other kind. All right, here we go. Tied four to four. Race to seven. Tony knows. Team Boom. Breaks and runs the re next three racks or any combination of winning the next three racks. This match is over. The championship, the trophies, the money, it's theirs. Have we seen a break and run today? I don't I think don't so, I don't think right? so. Well, I don't in eight ball we did. <coughs> Are you sure? Yeah, did I'm we? pretty sure. This could be the one right here. Right on cue. Huh? Yeah, but look at this. That stinking eight ball came right there. Once Rick comes back to the table. Yeah, he just came back and s turned around after getting his playing cue and saw that eight being there. Sometimes the table just doesn't want to cooperate. Rashid just said that he just broke and ran the last one. Was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah, he's right. Yeah, he was yeah. down four to two. All right. Well, he's paying attention. That's good. Nice yeah. job. Good for you, Rashid. Yeah. We were just, you know. Gold star. We're just seeing if you guys were paying attention, apparently. We had a few dry breaks prior to that. if he's looking at this bank in the side or is he looking can either bank the four ball considering where the five is or you can play this this way and try to bury this cue ball here because the nine ball is so close to the rail that makes it an easier shot to find the two rail position to get it to snuggle up behind the nine that's one of those where about the equal difficulty difficulty the bank and the shot might as well go offense got to hit it with some speed though don't want to get stuck behind the eight or this five ball hanging no it didn't quite get there oh did not quite get there. Pedro wants to cut us off. <laughs> they cut us off before we started. I wish we could. 
Ah, I wish you could join us instead, Pedro. Yeah. Mm. Oh, just barely got by. Get some Bring that spin on that cue ball to come back out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Phew. <laughs> Right, Rick says not so fast, Tony. And again, as we've been used to seeing Rick now, makes fast work of yeah. the rack. Then he has a chance and an open table. Pulls ahead once again, now leading five to four in this race to seven. Again, Rick has to win this match to force a third and deciding match between these two teams. Boom took the first match in the best two out of three. This is a must win for Rick Stanley and To The Moon. Great look at Pool Dog Arena here in Las Vegas. Home of all of our championship finals. This is the fourth of six that we've had here this week, or will have here, I should say. Two more days. Two more, three more sleeps, two, two more days. Two more talks for us. Two Yesterday more watching. we had the ladies' eight ball championship, world eight ball championship the day before, and they kicked it all off on Monday with the Jack and Jill Doubles Championship. So still to come, team captains and the Nine Ball World Championship. Been a busy week. We you watched bet. a lot of pool. We watched a lot of pool. It all starts well, to here run and together. In the a main bit. main yeah. arenas too. Holy smokes, there's a lot of pool. Oh, I was down, so we had a news crew. I mentioned who came down this this morning. They could be right. here at six a.m. So I was here. It was eerily quiet. I'm not usually down here this early, but. Nobody was down here. Mm -hmm. It was very quiet. There's a few people walking around, but so they were here from six to to like nine thirty. But you know, about quarter to nine, this flood of people just starts coming in for the yeah. nine o'clock round. <laughs> I mean, a couple thousand people within a span of like ten minutes, it's just almost... like came pouring in, like somebody opened the faucet and it just <laughs> it's came uh, rushing in. It's incredible. How many people there have been here? So many have gone home already. A, a lot of the eight ball players have left. And dry break for Rick. That was had big. a few dry breaks here in the yeah, nine ball set. Has. Tony steps up and what a nice layout he's faced with here. Table is looking pretty. So Obviously, the key here is to get on this side here on the three ball. So he's got a shot at the three. In a perfect world, you want to be right about here so you can whip the cue ball around. But I don't know if that he can get there. Somebody was asking about Efren Reyes and Shane Van Boning coming out to the uh, event next year. Efren, that might be a big ask. Last I, when we did, we did talk to him actually at Derby City or Billiards Digest, and he said his days of traveling overseas are kind of over. He's yeah. really big on traveling, and that may be the last time you see him in the States. Who knows? But uh, Shane is actually here quite often uh, with one of the vendors with the Q-Tech mm -hmm. booth. Uh, not here this year because he's competing in the the European Open. Yeah, we had... Um Efren was just in uh, our area down at Coastal Carolina APA at a place called Break Time. We just had him up, but and I got to have some fun with him there. And that was kind of towards the end of his this last tour. 
It might be another one. We never know. But that was supposed to be kind of his yeah. final I've tour. I've heard that a few times, though, that it was like his final tour. And, you know. Yeah. But, uh, boy, I tell you what, after seeing him at the Derby City, people still flock to watch him play. You oh, know, my goodness. Yeah. He's yes. a little past his prime yes. in terms of no competition. Question. But everybody wants to get a. And he's such a the man, great, the myth, he's the legend. such a sweet guy. He just smiles. Nice draw. Is that going to pay off? Not quite. But he's got two options. He can just freeze that Cuba behind the five, or he can make this three ball in the side pocket. Gonna go ahead and freeze it. I think. Just nestle it in with those balls right there. Make it. No, nope, he went ahead and read it. Okay, good shot. Somebody's asking about who's the next great up and coming American player. I would say you need to go watch one of the last issues of Billiards Digest Live. Mm -hmm. We talked to some great up-and-coming junior players. I know uh, Shane Wolford has put his <coughs> candidacy on the line to make the Moscone Cup this year. Fairly young American up-and-coming player. We just did a couple interviews with some very young juniors. You know Savannah Easton, 13 years old, plays in all the WPBA events. Yeah, she's so great. Ranked number 14. The roadrunner. On the WPBA at 13 years old. There's some young talent coming up for sure. Problem is the Europeans got a lot of talent themselves, right? Seems like they're just churning them out. Yeah, their junior program is fantastic. And their training program, and they all get together and work on stuff and drills and in it's it, it, same thing with the asian and it, it they're definitely better than our programs over here and the dedication is a little bit different um but we're coming along here we're starting to kind of get it and see their precision with their learning from young age and um making sure these kids don't have the bad habits that we were all faced with <laughs> we just picked up a cue and start playing and more and more the the style has changed of this game. Well, Tony Piazza ties this match back up by High game five. to peace, much to the delight of the audience here at Pool Dog Arena. At least most of them, probably not those that are rooting for its for the moon. But there you go, being clever again. I know, <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> I'm in. We're impartial here in the booth, so we are, of course. You know, it's it's like the old Buffalo Wild Wings Wild Wings commercial when the bartender would like hit a button and the, I don't know the kicker would kick the ball sideways right. because of a sprinkler and the match would just keep going and going. <laughs> That's what we want, isn't it, Ava? Of course, nothing better than hill hill matches. Hill hill nail biters. Mm hmm. Gut wrenching. Sweaty palms. You know what? The more pain the players are in, the more we tend to get excited. Like if they're all nervous and go, no, I don't want it to be close. Can I just, it's exciting for the crowd. And that's all there is to it. The more nerve wracking <clears throat> it is down there, the more exciting it is to watch. Yeah. Well, we had a pretty one-sided Jack and Jill doubles finale, the first stream we did this week. And, you know, it goes fast and it yeah. just wasn't all that great, uh, unfortunately. But, uh, since then, I feel like it's been pretty close. Yep. Every match yep. we've, we've done from here on out. Ladies' match went five deep last night. Sure did. Eight ball, four matches deep. Was it four matches for eight ball? Mm -mm. <laughs> Feels like, like it was a week was two ago, day, right? Three days ago. Yeah. Two days ago. We've only seen 187 racks of pool since then. We can't even remember if, you know, the last rack was a break and run so it's true it's two it's true. Ago. it all blends together believe me tony piazza with the break would love to be on the hill after this rack 
She needs to keep the cue ball from bouncing around this time. No, he didn't. Ooh. Look out. All right. Pockets the one and the seven again. Yeah, not much to look at here, though. Not that it's needed in this situation, but push shot is allowed in Masters 9 ball. If you're tuning in late, you're watching coverage of the APA Masters Championship. $10,000 on the line. This is a combination eight ball and nine ball. They are in the nine ball set. Best two out of three. Race to seven for these individual matches. The team boom is up one nothing in the best two out of three. And we are all tied up at five in the second match. Must win for the team of To the Moon out of Dallas, Texas. I know he doesn't like this, but if anything, I would push the cue ball closer, just in the same line that he's at, so he can at least get off the rail if he gets a shot back. Rarely does it do good players give the shot back unless it's something really bad. He's going to try to kick here, I would think. No, or play the bank. If he can hit enough to bank it down, try to hide it down at the other side of the table. But as close as the two ball is to the rail, he could really kick the correct side of it if he wants to. And he might be able to drift the cue ball behind this five. Good shot. That was a good shot. It came out of there. Rick Stanley back to the table. Nine ball. Ooh. Nine ball. No. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tony's going, really? Everybody got excited here in the room there. It's and that just... <laughs> Tony looked at his teammates. <laughs> yeah. Now what? Okay, I have a feeling referees coming close up and personal here. Mm. Make sure that the six ball isn't clipped. Got to go for it, though. Although, well... I don't know. You could kick bottom cushion too. Just tap it and try to get behind the six. This is. He's going for it. Yeah, he sure is. Go get it, Tony. Make the highlight reel. No. No good. Risky shot with that six ball being there. Really risky shot. Nine ball will be spotted after the referee calls the foul. Made contact with the six ball first. It was a nice try, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, kind of all or nothing there. He just said, uh, that's, you know, so what's the decision there? He could have played defense, and he just said, the heck with it. I'm, I'm going. I want this. No, it was definitely bad, guys. He even picked up the ball. Don't start something again, please. <laughs> he picked up the ball before the referee even had a chance to say anything. So you're just going to have to trust it. Okay. Ooh. 
<laughs> Some more drama there. Oh, oh wow. my. Yep. I don't think I've seen Tony move that fast the whole match. He got out of that chair quickly. Mm, mm, mm. Nope. No, sir. And more drama. He likes it on the rail, I guess, or does he? And we've got Rick Stanley to the moon on the hill. One more, and this is going to force it into a third match, third and final match. It's best two out of three in matches. Anthony surprisingly got a chance at the eight there, but he had to really come with a thin cut. But it's Rick that has the break and the lead, 6-5, race to seven. <laughs> Rick finally made a ball on the break. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd even applauded, got all excited. Hey, there was a ball made. Oh, <laughs> 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 he's smiling. All right, so you got the two ball side pocket. Now, do we go for? Breaking that up now. He's got to get real precise. See where he's pointing? It's pretty much the exact spot he has to be. Oh. Yeah. They're going fast there. Which is not surprising. Rick does play fast, but he seemed, for even for him, he seemed like he shot that quickly. For. Tony is going to have natural angle to go in and do something about that 5-9. He's going to make sure he gets a shot on the 3 afterwards. There's no guarantee there, obviously. So he needs to get a little bit of luck, try to figure out which part of the 9 and 5 to hit. The three ball is just too low for him to even have a billiard, but he's got some easy safe here. The thing is, he wants to have, he's looking, do I want to try to make that in the side? I don't know if it goes.
lot at stake here. Tony really wants to just close this match out. A kind of a funky spot, but if he hits the right side of this three ball, he can easily glide behind the nine and the seven. Just want to make sure he doesn't leave an easy jump shot. He hits it real soft. He's looking to see, is there a way to, he's hungry for this billiard people. But I don't, I don't know if he, it's makeable. He just has to feather this three ball. No, no, it's <laughs> close. I mean, just ba <coughs> barely even hit it. Just enough to make contact if he's going to be able to. And he can't hit it firm either. He's going to have to hit it harder. I mean, softer in order to, to follow kind of take here and keep the angle to make the billiard. I don't know if it's, if it's doable. It's going to be close. No, I think he's playing defense here. Changed his mind. Uh-oh. You got to pick where mm. you want to be. You just left a straight-in shot into the side pocket. Wow. He went back and forth. What do I do? And then didn't really settle for where he wanted to go with the cue ball and left a window. And if I was still a gambling woman, I would say we're, we're going to have third a third match. match. I've seen you play video poker. No. You've Never? seen me play craps, maybe. Craps, man. No video poker? No. Uh, well, yeah, actually. Just yes. to get a drink, you know? Well, it's nice here. It's like $20, and you can yeah. get two, two drinks or three as long as you're staying and you're gambling. Yeah. So, you know. Prices aren't cheap in Las Vegas, so you might as well play some video poker, right? Rick Stanley about to even this match up, folks. Pockets the nine ball, wins this match 7-5. And we are going to a third and final match between these two great teams. To the moon out of Dallas, Texas. The boom out of Aurora, Colorado. I'm going to take just a minute here, and we will be back with more coverage of the APA Masters Championship. Hey. Listen, I know that you don't play pool, but my league team is looking for someone tonight who's never played, so you're coming with. Great. I'll see you there. Hi, guys. Hey. Hey, hey how you doing? Hey. Welcome. Welcome. You did it. We're going to Vegas. Vegas, baby.
every loss is a, a very valuable lesson that I have taken and um, utilized from my mistakes to make a better person and a better player of myself and others. I want to make a shout out to Leo, Jose. Without these guys, man, we, we all did it as a team, you know. Jose, holy smokes, I feel about bad for him. In here, folks. I think so. Loud. Another opportunity for Jose Salas to finish this match off for the World Championship. And there it is. There you go, folks. The Fantastic. Scorpions, Joliet, Illinois. And they are the 2020, 2021 APA World Eight Ball Champions. First of all, I want to say thank you, God. Thanks, God. Thank you, thank APA. You and thank, thanks to all my friends, my family, mis amigos, mi familia. And we our were friends. on a mission together as a team, and we became a family. Be consistent, practice, and always, always listen to the master players, the better shooters. They will guide you and they will lead you. My husband has led me and I have led him and taught him things. Also I wanna say right now, cause my kids are watching, Junior Daniel, we did it baby. Number one baby, long shots, we did it. Daniel, look at daddy's trophy. <laughs>
Jonathan Neiman at the table, or as some have affectionately referred to him, the mullet man. And he, and he did tell me that he's going to cut it all off if he wins today. Really? So, oh, yeah. And he's got it. Jonathan Neiman, Wilmington, North Carolina, your eight ball classic champion in the red tier, folks. How's my hair looking? Your hair's looking good. In fact, uh, I believe Ava and Jason were talking about it, that if you won, you were going to cut it. I, I did say that. I did say that. <laughs> And we are back. We have To the Moon and Boom tied at one match apiece. And we're going into the final one. And this is going to be for To the Moon. This is going to be Gus Brizino. And on the other side, we have Jeremiah Gage. And he's playing for Boom. And one race to seven we're starting with five games of eight ball and then we go into the nine ball portion after that first to seven players needed to break we had some technical di difficulty we dealt with at the same time so we are back and this is it for masters right here one match take it all ten thousand on the line Ultimate bragging rights. You know, it's funny. Everybody was just watching Whiteout. Wherever you went, everybody was talking about Whiteout, who won it last year, because everybody mm -hmm. wants to, you know, defeat the Dethrone defending. The yeah, well, absolutely. Makes and the sense. throne they did get by this team right here on your right, which is Boom. Again, this is... Gus, Gus Brasino, and then we have Gage on the other side, Jeremiah Gage, because you know, goes by Gage. I'm just going to call him what his friends call him, so. Oh, they call him Gage, mm -hmm. huh? All right. That's what I was, that, that's what I guess carried a check, and that's what we were told. By his teammates. Just call him Gage. Got it. <laughs> Gus and Gage. For all the glory. It's a GG battle. All right, here we go. Seven ball. Bank, I would think. I don't know if he can cut this. He should be able to cut it if he wants to here. No one's playing defense. Nice shot, too. Well, he left the 11 ball open down here. So not the perfect shot that he was looking for. Kind of a messy table a little bit here. That 15 ball is going to be a bit of an issue. But Gage is at the table. He's going to take a look and just survey what's going on. Double check in there to see if it was ball was frozen. Obviously, that's going to make it a little bit easier to make, and he'll have the freedom to do a little more with the cue ball. Now that he knows it's frozen, have it referee go check for him. 
Can he get past the six ball? He did not. Wow. That didn't work at all, did it? Hush. Not sure if he hit that maybe a little thicker than he wanted to. It's still going to go in, but a little more full hit. Kind of cue ball just died on him there. Well, this Masters final certainly has not disappointed Ava. No, it's been back great and so far. Back, back yeah. and forth. Two close matches could have gone either way. Could not have scripted it much better. We'll see if the third and deciding match follows the same blueprint. Okay, let's see if he can do some damage here. Can hit this. Mm, no. And there you see the payout for the twenty twenty three Masters Championship out here in Vegas. Yep. Started the day with four teams down to the final two. Our two third place finishers each took home three thousand dollars. got really quiet out in here. You guys can't quite hear it. Unfortunately, we can't have the sound in the room up high with see hearing the balls or the audience because we can't control the music and Westgate's got some music in the background and we don't want Facebook to put us in jail and cut the, uh, cut the feed, which so often happens when somebody owns the rights to the music. Yeah, that old, we don't own the rights to the music, that doesn't work. No, it doesn't. <laughs> People try that. Putting that on doesn't do anything. No. <clears throat> yeah, nobody is sitting there reading that and actually <laughs> cutting you off. It's kind of done yeah. with AI or whatever it is that does it. But, yeah, they catch you. Do you know what's interesting, too? We usually film our finals in uh, our area, the Coastal Carolina APA, and I know that a lot of the league operators do too. We stream it, and I usually tape the microphone, and that normally works well until a certain song, like a Beyonce song comes on, it can hear the beat of the song, oh, and it'll shut us off. So, yeah. Okay, table looks real nice, but obviously the one ball is the one to deal with on the on this side here. He's got both the three and the five where he can deal with it coming up. That should not be a problem. You never know what the result is going to be, though, when you have that much distance between the balls you're trying to break up because you can't really control which side of the balls you're hitting to leave yourself a shot, so we'll see. Right, this rack is far from being over. Hmm. I guess he's trying to draw into him now. He hit the wrong side of the one. That's what happened there. So that didn't work. He was going to hit the one 
first that was the wrong side or he could hit the 13. So back to the drawing board again. safety except now nah, well not really you got the 14 ball in the corner pocket here so I guess he did the best he could right there shot it's gonna have a challenge a little bit with that 13 ball I would draw the cue ball up now in the nine and then Deal with that later on. Try to get an angle to and the 10 ball to float down, and then he can actually deal with that ball then. So if he can shoot 9, get straight in on this 10, then he doesn't have to break anything up. Just roll up, get here, play this ball in here, and he should be good to go. The important part is the position here. He has to get straight or almost straight. Just like that. Oh, wow. Well, that was unexpected. An unexpected miss there by Gage. Again, don't forget, these guys have nerves. You know, it's easy to sit home. And what was the last thing? Armchair cowboy? What was it? <laughs> <laughs> armchair athlete. Athlete. A armchair athlete. I like that one. It's easy to say, like, what was he doing? He ain't no good. Well, trust me, these guys are nervous just like anybody else. Sure. With your gauge or Gus, you guys might think they're like mini gods on the pool table. Doesn't yeah. matter. Doesn't matter. I have seen every pro player from Allison to Shane to Sky to I don't care who you <coughs> bring up, sh shaking in the matches. Myself included, it doesn't matter how long you've been playing, if you're a pro, if you're the best one, if you're the favorite, everybody has that point where they get nervous. Nice speed. Did he hold it before he left the shot? I'm not sure. That's going to be close. He may have hit it a hair too far. That's going to be so close that I think only Gage can really tell he can make it. But I think so from his body language. Went over and looked at the angle. He wants to be on on the 13. That tells me he's got a shot.
No, he overcut it. That's that didn't work. He wanted to hold it right there. Hmm. You know, even making this combination, making Gus's one ball here, it's just, especially with the eight ball being in the way, it's tough to control the cue ball to try to play a safe. Five ball is where it is. Ugh. Not a, not a favorable, not a popular position to be in here, Jason. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything fun here. To the moon teammates looking on. Oh, did he just get lucky? No, he did. Uh -uh. No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, Gus is kind of shaking his hand and has kind of a wry smile on his face, so maybe he can't make it. He can't. He's looking at the bank. What an interesting, strange rack this has been. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of funky little... Kind of a weird start to yeah, this third match. Yeah. I like that Q Gus is using, though. It's a good-looking Q stick. That's <laughs> kind of blingy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So you're not old school, then, what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know that it matters. I just like how it looks. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. <clears throat> I will mention both players have gloves in this match, Ava. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, Ooh, wow. <laughs> got away with one, though. And Didn't he? Got a little nice roll there and a shot at the eight. Looks like Gus is primed to take this first rack in our final match of the, of the day of the tournament, period. Pockets the eight ball, one down, six to go for Gus Brasino in this race to seven. We will have the break, the second game of the eight ball set. Then we'll see five games of eight ball before they switch to nine ball. Here at Pool Dog Arena. Alliance. Mostly high fives and not a, not much noise, just high fives and clapping. Eight ball. Probably wouldn't get to um, that hot dog down. Okay. I guess it just symbolizes winning. Confident. Jeremy Jones, Texas boy. Nine ball. Go Mountain Dew and hot dog. All right. Good look at Pool Dog Arena here. Of course, we have our team captain's championship tomorrow evening, 5 p.m. Pacific. 8 p.m. for those of you on the East Coast. Definitely want to tune in and watch that. It's a fun format, too. Combination eight ball and nine ball. Hmm. Switches with each rack. Right. Players switch each rack. Moves very quickly. Okay, here we go. Let's see if that 
little bit of first game jitters that we saw in the first rack here. Haunted both players, along with some of the weird rolls and leaves that ended up as a result of that. Let's see if we can Gus can get something started here for him in this rack by making a ball on the break. Nope. Mm. And Gage is going to get to the table. It says Jeremiah Gage is playing for Team Boom, who knocked out the defending champions. They're not clawed their way here, and they are tied one game apiece and against To The Moon. Tim Larson started us out. Yeah, it was Tim Larson, Greg Romero. Second match, Tony Piazza and Rick Stanley. Now we are in the third and deciding match. We're going the distance. Just gonna take you know, it's interesting to see because both of these players are way more deliberate than the last two. There was some speed, they were running around. Both, you know, both Tony and Rick were just kind of as soon as they got an opening, boom. But way more deliberate play here by Gus and Gage. So, when you get a little more comfortable, especially playing the game of eight ball. Let's see, the, you know, obviously that's more of a thinking game, like where do you want to start your run out? This level, it normally doesn't work out too well if you start to run out and don't go all the way out and you miss a ball. Chances are you're going to be sitting for the next break. It's going to have some work, I think, with this 11 ball. That's going to be one to kind of figure out. And same thing potentially with a 15. He's making this in the side. I wonder if he's going to try to go into the 4 and 13. There, maybe he did. Didn't get much for it though. Hmm. Yeah, no, don't think he'll be running this rack. He's gonna have to come up with something, but I don't see him see an open <coughs> shot. Somebody is saying tables playing slower than gauge presumed. That is correct. We've had rain here, so all the tables that have been super fast with this brand new Simona's cloth, especially in here with the TV lights, drying the table up even more. It's been sliding because it's new and because it's super dry air. But we got rain today in Las Vegas and the humidity kicked in and the tables slow down. And the rails have changed just ever so slightly from having some more moisture in them. Gus Bersino back to the table for To the Moon, leading this match one to nothing. All right, Gus is serve it in. Gus's situation is much better. Looks much brighter than it did for Gage. The problem is the eight, where 
he's going to pocket that. So he's just taking a look at that. And then now the next step, deciding what order do I want to make these balls here. Okay, we'll see if he's decided he wants to do with that eight ball. I believe it passes. Mm, I pass in here. I'm not sure. But I think he can actually, once the two ball's gone, I think he can hit it clean. And he's got the four and seven to get to that eight easily. So if it does pass there, he's got a great opportunity here. Just play 3-2, 5 straight on, stick it pretty much there, go down in the rail, come out a little bit for the 7 either way. 7 in the side, just want to be straight in, and he's got the 8 in the same pocket as the 2 and the 3. So and the way he's playing this, it tells me that the 8 does go. He hasn't made any effort to try to break it open, so... It's kind of risky. Another turn or two, and all of a sudden he could have gotten married there with a 13 ball. I'm not sure why he decided to, unless he got some unwanted draw there. I'm not sure why he wanted to go up away from the eight ball. Made things a little bit tougher on himself there instead of just kind of stopping with a straight in shot. Hmm. Yep. It's one of those things you never know unless you actually ask Gus what he was <coughs> thinking there instead of just stopping and then having a straight in shot rolling up. But sometimes you just kind of miss hit it. You know, if you don't, if you hit the ball a little bit off to the left or the right, and the spin is going to take a little bit more. So, but it gives a great chance for Gage to step to the table here. Make sure that all the balls are have pockets. Make a game plan and go to town. I feel like both of these players, you can tell that they are more, um, take more more time than the last two, but I think at a certain point you need to loosen up and, and fire. The balls are wide open.
Gage trying to tie this match up at one game apiece. Again, it's a race to seven here in the Masters Championship. Both teams having won one match. Why would we expect anything but a one, one, two, <laughs> two, three, three? No, we've had the last two, right? <laughs> that could actually have ended up worse going into that seven. He's got a good chance, good opportunity making this eight ball, obviously, in the side pocket as it turned out. Eight in the side for Gus. Ties this up at one game apiece. All right, we'll just, <clears throat> again, in case you just joined us, it's one to one in individual matches and one to one in this particular final match race to seven a winner takes it all and will be the 2023 champion out here at the world pool championships it's a great week that's been going by but we're about to, what eight days into it is that eight what you're day, saying yeah yep. eight days we still have two to go two to go after today or as I like to say, three more sleeps. <laughs> three more sleeps. Are you taking the red eye home again? No. Oh, Can you believe you're it? You're here till Sunday, huh? I'm here till Sunday. That's different. Well, I. You know why? Flight last options. Year, last year, no. Well, last year that my red eye was canceled. Oh. Which is not fun when you're exhausted to begin with. Yeah. Still. Oh, I realized that. I think Actually, I got like a seven a.m. I got like a, a seven a.m. flight that morning. Me so. too, six forty. Yeah, that's kind of like a red eye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It might as well be. Yeah, the flight times were not spectacular this year. Good look there at Pool Dog Arena. Referee working on the rack. Third game of the eight ball set. Gage will have the break. I'm 
um, unorthodox style when he breaks his way down on the cue stick. See if he raises up here as he goes through. No, he's going really, to stay yeah. down. Yeah. Players well, tend to stand up a little bit more, but obviously it works. Yeah. And uh, he's got solids. And I believe he's got a shot on this two ball. The one ball passes, three balls in a little bit of trouble, but the four is there to help out with that. This is a very makeable, touchy little run out, but definitely makeable, even though it looks all clustered. Nice shot there. One looks to me he's going to have to really play some precise position and make it sure he comes all the way up to this four ball. Easy to come too short there. and I think he'll go too far, but he's got kind of a narrow window. You always prefer to, in this case, if you have that narrow window to get yourself on the rail, it's a lot easier to hit a spot on the rail than it is to hit the perfect speed. But I think the 13 is in the way for him to go to rails and up. All right. Gus Persino back to the table here. <coughs> <clears throat> that was the text I just sent. Great minds think alike, no, right? It, aren't we brilliant? All right. Okay, a lot of work left to do here. Try to make both balls here, or at least cover that pocket if it doesn't work out. Didn't leave much here for for Gage.
We were talking about the prize money in discussion. Yeah, it's you got to remember a lot of the leagues do not have weekly play. Very few have weekly play. They might have once a month play. If you have a little bit more than that, but most either have just a qualifying tournaments for these guys to get in. So the fact that it's 10,000 for the team with only four players, an eight ball gets 30,000, and they usually play um, every single week. So it's a little bit different, you know. So their showdown series is never going to have the same payout as your regular team. You got masters, ladies, doubles, team captain, Jack and Jill. It's always going to be less payout, obviously, than our premier the events big, the big boys the big dogs yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and it's a, and again we got to remind you guys too it, this is an amateur league this is not the pros these guys are you know not playing on the pro tour this is an amateur event like coming from sweden it's funny cuz no if prize you're an amateur if, if you're an amateur you, you Shouldn't get big, you know, not getting paid. And usually <laughs> you go to the European Championships, get a medal, spend two, right? weeks, two weeks there and get a medal. Exactly. So it's a little bit different. But anyway, I think 10 grand trip out here. These guys have been playing Mini Mania. So oh, there's no rail there. Jason Strawn wants the Westgate to add some money to it. It's, <laughs> it's always easy to spend other people's money. Isn't yeah, it? the Westgate. <clears throat> trust me, they want some money from the pudding. This, uh. you know, to have us here. This is not a cheap thing for APA <laughs> to put on right here. Westgate is into making money. Trust me. Just like everybody else. Chase Laverne said in Sweden, you get someone, <laughs> you get someone to assemble your IKEA coffee table in a metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so see, that's why I moved here to the states. All right, this is going to take a while. This rack, this is going to be an interesting. This is kind of. 8-ball 101 right here. Nobody's going to take any chances, especially these two players from what I've gathered so far. Our last match, they were a little bit more risk-taker. Those of you who were here saw Tony go for a long kick with a 6-ball threatening to make it a foul. If you were here to see that match, there's not going to be any of that risk-taking in this match, yeah. I don't believe. <clears throat> Now about four hours into this Masters Championship. There was that combo he had planned yeah. to make earlier.
Mm. Could not get that 8-9 ball out of the way, could he? Huh. That was looking good for a moment there, Gus. But no, I'm, I don't know. Can he get over there with his jump cue? We'll have to find out. No, he's going to kick at it. Nine ball is a bit close. Plus, he is impeded by the balls that are behind the cue ball. He did pretty good. No, just missed it. All right, let's see if Gus can solve this mess that he's got right there. 14, 10, and 13. shot and he got got a payoff with a shot obviously on the nine but the ten ball can he make that in the side awfully sharp angle See what he's going to come up with here for the a 10 and the 14. Certainly doesn't have an angle to do it here. Looks like he's going to try to go across and back in between the 8 and 3. Oh, he's playing safety. All right. Makeable to makeable three ball here. Kick shot. Not easy. Better than when it's in the middle of a table, but he's close enough to a then you know where he can kind of gauge it a little bit. No pun intended. Oh, so close. Nice try. That's not what he wanted to do. Gonna try to get a little ticky tick here. Going to rail first. Got to make sure you hit a rail after, though. He wants to make sure he leaves it behind his balls. Oh, he tried yeah. to make it. Did he get a? Oh, he got a backup plan. Well, not an easy cut. But three ball is there for the taking for Gage to take this 
third game. We can make this three ball. It should get good shape on the eight. Kind of stepped into that, jumped up a little bit. That's one of those you really got to bear down and trust it. Make sure you don't go down too far to where you're blocking the stroke when it's on the rail like that and you'll just stay still. And he just kind of came out of it before it was done. <coughs> Gus decided to go into that 14 today, and instead of going up and down the table there, cutting that ball in, and didn't get the result obviously he wanted here. It's a thin cut if he, that's what he's going to do. Can be looking to play defense, possibly. <coughs> Simple bank trying to get that eight, uh, 14 ball between the cue ball and the three would do the trick. He's cueing like he's going for the bank. Straight back. He did, and oh, Got nice it. shot, nice shot, Gus. Chance now for Gus Brasino to take the lead. Pockets the well eight ball. Done. While we've got a moment, want to make sure we thank our sponsors Bulldog.com, Aramith Billiard Balls, Action Cues, and our friends at Diamond Tables. All right, we're going to have a quick break, and so we're going to take a break here at Pool Dog Arena. We'll be back in just a few moments. Listen, I know that you don't play pool, but my league team is looking for someone tonight who's never played, so you're coming with. Great, I'll see you there. 
Hi guys. Hey. 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 How you doing? You did it. We're going to Vegas. Vegas, baby. Every loss is a, a very valuable lesson that I have taken and um, utilized from my mistakes to make a better person and a better player of myself and others. I make a shout out. All right, back here at Pool Dog Arena. Break there by Gus. One ball on the break. He made a stripe on the break. 14 ball hanging, so he's got that going for him, but pretty heavy cluster going on on the left side of the table, very right. Could try to <clears throat> slam into the balls here, if we can avoid that six ball, go down the bottom cushion. Oh, he's going to take his time. 10 ball, side pocket. You know what? This table just <clears throat> I didn't this table looks great all of a sudden. You got perfect on this ten. Just tap the thirteen a little bit. And this could be uh not to jinx ourselves, it could could be a quick rack. <laughs> Uh, we'll see. Ben said, I went to dinner and came back. How is this still going? <laughs> it's been some good battles. The first two were... It has. Close matches. Very close. This one's been a little bit of a slow start. I do have to agree. Yes, very much so. But both are very deliberate, slower players. Table hasn't the table hasn't always been too kind, and it's been some uncharacteristic misses. And you, everybody knows. Oh, he drew that too far. Wow. Put a little extra juice on that one, didn't he? And I just made the th things. He came about three inches from the perfect run out here. We'll see if he can fix things. Drawing off, the, he's going to try to draw off the five ball. Hit that Ooh. sweet. Oh. Good job.
Oh, wow. Ooh. Wow. Went from... Well, things not looking good, let's put it that way. I don't know what he's going to do here. Well, he's got a plan. Banking it. Ooh, watch out. Ew. Cue ball. Oh, he ooh, got ooh, lucky ooh, there. Ooh. And I pulls up right on the lip of that corner. And that's that could Hanging turn out there. to be nasty for Gage. I'm not even yeah. sure he can make this three ball. I think he's corner hooked. Yeah, that might work out for Gus. Wow. That ball just hanging there. Yeah, it's got a shot at the one ball, but judging where the cue ball is at, not not the easiest. But he'll take it. I don't think there was right. any chance Gage thought he was coming back to the table. Pockets the one in the side. Well struck. It looks like Gage has picked up his pace a little bit, and it looks like it's doing him some good. Like you get, you know, play too slow, too deliberate, you get in a fog, and that it's hard to get out of. It slows your thinking down, makes you question a lot of stuff. Got to remember, this is still kind of an athletic endeavor, and the more you move in between shots, the more your brain can get some oxygen. At the same time, walk around quickly, see what the other angle is if you've got problems. But when they're here now, these guys, you know what to do. Take a look, see where your angle, what angle you want to be at, and then just go down and hit it. Again, I think we'll see here. Just a nice little tap. He wants to get off the rail, obviously. Only thing I can see go wrong here if he gets straight in. He just wants to bounce lightly off the end rail. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Oh, Gage, I feel bad about that. I mean, he was not over yet. Still a Mr. here for that ball Gus. Again, another ball hanging just sitting in the chair and coming up to this shot is not necessarily easy here. Big deal there. Three games to one as opposed to tying it up. Gus came with it. After just barely hanging up that six ball in the side pocket by Gage. So Gus needs four games. Gage still needing six. This is a race to seven. We have one more game of eight ball before they move into the nine ball set. We got 
referee's going to rack, rack up these balls, and I'd like to take a chance. I know both Jason and I and everybody, everybody that's here should, if you run into a referee, thank them and say if you're still out here in Vegas or if you know somebody locally that comes home and spent, what is it, 11 days refereeing out here? 11 long days on the their feet. most thankful thing you can do. Yes, yeah. they're out here. They have a blast, too, obviously, when they come out. They're good, well taken care of by the APA. Takes a village. However, um, it's a thankless job. So we want to give a sh huge shout out to all our referees and volunteers that are out here helping make this such a great event. Gus Brasino with the break once again. That was a solid break there. Yeah. Opened way up, and I do believe he's got choice. He's got two yes. two stripes and one solid. Yes, sir. On the break. That was the first really good open break where everything kind of opened up really nice, I think I've seen, or maybe the second or third in the whole three matches so far. Let's see if Gus can take advantage. Well, Cena, I don't know what to make of what you just said. You actually like a positive thing. She had fun. She was out here first time, had a great time. Nice. Enjoy the tournament and the officials. Well, it's nice to hear from you, Sina. Appreciate it. Glad you had a good time. Hope you come back. I've actually had quite a few people come <coughs> up to me and kind of say it's things like that. Whether yeah. Whether it's the, they had a great time or they enjoy the streaming or. Most it's everybody very complimentary. has a It's really nice when people say, you know. Yeah. Just Good oh to know they're having a good time. You usually tend to hear more from the other side. Well, that's yeah, okay. the negative Nellies. Yeah. But I am certain that if you came out here and you did not have a good time, it might be your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Unless something negative happened. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been a blast out here. I know all the players from my <clears throat> area said that they've been having a great time. So I hope everybody else has too. Kirk Overcash said he d hated having to go home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. It's kind of a weird deal at the end <clears throat> of this, you know. Yeah, especially when like it, you see it all torn down at the end. It's, I mean, on one hand, you want to go home and see right. your family and then get back to your life, but on the other, it's weird seeing something that takes so much effort to put together being Correct. just ripped out in a matter of, you know, thirty six hours or forty eight hours. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Did he go too far? I th yeah, looks like it. Uh, he might have to curve it just a hair. I'm not sure. Yeah, yep. he's going to have to curve it. Even if he makes this, he could slide right behind that 14 ball. He's got to hit this kind of soft. Oh. Too hard. He hit it too hard. Did he just get lucky? No, he didn't. 15 ball is wide open. And a chance for Gage to stay in this match. Again, Gage is part of the team called Boom from Aurora, Colorado. They took the first match, first of three matches, behind Greg Romero. To the Moon took the second match, thanks to Rick Stanley. 
And that brings us to the third and deciding match here. Oh. Wow, that's <coughs> the gauge. And an opportunity for Gus to extend the lead and hold that break in the nine ball set. The thing cut, he's going to have to let the cue ball loose a little bit. If he hits it pure, he might be able to avoid the nine going down and come back up. Looks like he's hitting with some low right. And that's going to work beautifully right off the 14. He's got eight in the side, and that's going to extend his lead if he makes this eight ball to four games to one. And that's going to bring us into nine ball after this rack. And the winner of this rack is going to have the break. And that's going to be Gus Brezino. Now up four to one, three games away from victory. Gus is, I'm sorry, Gage, still six games away. The referee will pull a couple balls off the table, move into the nine ball set. Quite the match here at Pool Dog Arena between these two great Masters teams. Looks like we've lost a little bit of our audience as we've gone along here. Now in the about four and a half hours in this match. I do see one of our one person in the audience I recognize, Jacob Watson. The defending US amateur champion. Oh yeah? I didn't taking see it in. He's over here. <coughs> The trademark red hair. Can't miss him. We'll see Jacob and mm -hmm. several other players that I've seen here this week at the U.S. Amateur Championship in November. See if Jacob can defend that title. Again, the nine ball. The nine ball team tournament is the last one to be crowned day after tomorrow. So you have the team captains <coughs> championship tomorrow. They're going strong and they're starting to narrow down in the main tournament rooms. And then the nine ball will be on Saturday. And as Jason says, three more sleeps. Three more that sleeps. That was a solid break nice. right there. Wow. Four balls on the break. Could make some quick work out of this one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he found him in the crowd. There he is. You said redhead, and then he said, well, who's that? Wait, yeah, where is he? There he is. <laughs> I think he's going to try to make the combo, even if the three goes, considering where the four is. Yeah. So you can get some kind of an angle to get down here on the four. Smooth left spin to rail position to come down for this four ball. This is speed. Oh boy, he hit that way too firm. Holy smokes. He forgot the smooth mm. part. Yuck. All right, just going to try to kick this. This is where, you know, you try to find the center ball just off hair, off just a hair, and just lag the cue ball into the four, 
four ball and get it to the rail and you might get lucky and get snookered behind the eight. Or you do that and still got lucky. How do you like it? <laughs> he blocked. Blocked the pocket with the eight. I like that one better. See if Gage can make some magic happen here. Close the gap in this match. Yeah, he's starting to get to that got to do point here in this match. Five to one. That's going to be tricky to get back. Not impossible, but at four to four to one, he's still very much in this match. Needless to say, feeling he's can cross bank this four. Even if he has to bring the cue ball all the way down where he is now as a backup plan. He might be able to, I don't think he can get underneath and play a carom right here off the eight. I'm not sure he's got enough space to do that. I don't think he can play a billiard. Can he make the combo maybe? That was tough either way. Tough shot either way. All right, Ava, chance for Gus to go up 5 1 here. This is the biggest lead we've seen today in any yeah. of these matches starting to pull away a little bit assuming he pockets the nine ball fires it in without an issue all right. Now two games away from victory is Gus Brasino and his To the Moon teammates. He will have the break here. Gage patiently waiting for an opportunity. Hoping to close the gap. We will be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Time with our team captain's championship. Always a fun one. And that's something else, too, that remember, if you're setting up a team this session, the fall session coming up close to this time across the country uh, and in Canada and in Asia as well. But remember, if you have a team captain um, tournament to try to come out here to Las Vegas and, and you run there's a qualifier where you live to set up your be careful when you set up your rosters so if you have it let's say a double jeopardy team you may want to consider having two captains on your one on the eight ball and one on your nine ball team that type of thing because two sessions are required so remember that so that you don't Another lose out on the bed deadline there yeah, that's this is looking good. Except that four ball keeps tying up two with balls. a nine, doesn't it? Yeah, two balls on the break there. Can see the one. Hmm. He's got a good chance though of getting it on angle to do something with that four. The three ball being right by the side pocket right there. He let it slide a little bit longer than he wanted, but he should be all right. He can come down here, go two rails and in, or he can just go ahead and kind of draw it this way or directly into him. He's got all different kind of options here.
Looks like he's going one rail. There you go. Nice, nice. shot. <clears throat> I think Gus looks a lot more now settled in, doesn't he? A little more comfortable now than he did the first couple of racks. He's picked He's up his few, speed a little yeah. bit, and he just looks more, you know, obviously it's easier to be confident With at 5-1. Four-point four lead, <laughs> four-game yeah. lead, yeah. Yeah, but still. But you're right, yeah. It seems like they have picked up the pace a little bit after that first couple of racks. Touchy little shot here. Nice. Wow. Nicely executed. Just got yep. the perfect position on the six. I think Gus has enough angle, I believe, to go into the rail and just a little bit of left spin to come up and shoot the eight ball in the opposite corner. Two balls away here, Gus, from getting on the hill. Well, Gus is kind of Thinking about bringing that trophy back to Texas right about now. At least that's his plan. I know Gage is still here. Gage is still alive. Needs a couple of breaks. But he needs to get to the table first to be able to do anything because it is Gus Brazino that's got the break going in He's to the eighth the rack. Yeah, one game away. To the moon will be... Taking the trophies back to Dallas if he can win one more big rack here. The balls are racked. Gus is going to Look him over real quick. Boy, his break's working well mm -hmm. his last few racks. Yes. He's controlling the cue ball well, and he's getting some power on the, making two, three balls a, per break. Which is always nice when you're playing nine ball. Or any game, really, but especially sure. nine ball. Wow, holy smokes, did he hit those well? <laughs> <laughs> no wow. easy shot on the three left, but... Four balls on the break. Yeah. He even started to crack a smile. He was <laughs> hoping one of yeah. them would have stayed on the table, the one through one or two, so he could have had an easier shot here, but beggars can't be choosers, so... Looks like he's banking it. He is. Came up short, though. This is... Gage needed here. Needless to say, sure, he's got yeah. a chance. 
And this time he's got a good chance to open table. Jeremiah Gage of the Boom. Oh, my. That's just pressure there. Yeah. Him. Pressure and I'm sure some <clears throat> some frustration too. You yeah. know he's down six to one, and it mm -hmm. seems like a mountain right now. And if something feels off, you know if he's not playing the way he has the rest of the tournament, I get that too. The first mm -hmm. half of the match was kind of strange, knowing how really really great these guys play. I think everybody was a little bit surprised that it was kind of. Mm, not the, not their best matches but and if you don't if you don't catch up on that it's kind of you know what i mean you feel like you're oh wow mm -hmm. wow wow he came up well we'll see if he can pull this out Super, super thin cut. Avoid the break. The good thing is the cue ball can come around, zoom around this way. Out for the eight. One, two, there it is. And looks like we're going to have our good chance of crowning our champions here in just a minute, Jason. Made a nice smooth stroke. Coming around, let's see if he can do it again. Plan his contact point on the nine. See what speed and spin you want to have on the cue ball. Would have to really get unlucky not to get some kind of a shot on the nine here. Only the nine ball remains. And there's your some kind of a shot. He's got that nine in the side pocket. Or he's going to the corner. Corners are more friendly than sides. We know that. So This is for the win, folks. Gus Brasino. The and there it is. Falls to the moon are taking the trophy to the moon. back to Dallas. They are your 2023 APA Masters champions. Huge shout out to to Boom, who knocked out last year's champions, the defending champions, wide out and played a fantastic tournament. Just came up a little short against the strong to the moon team. Quite the battle there, Ava. We'll see if we can get a quick word in with the new Masters champions. Ayana's going to have a quick word with them. Take okay. it away, Ayana. Hey, Larson. Larson with an E. Congratulations on winning the 2023 Masters Championships. Tell me, how are you guys feeling right now? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your journey from back home to playing in the championships here. Uh, yeah, what was Lots it? of driving. 
Oh, yeah, lots of driving. They live in an hour from the bar that we play out of. So uh, all of them, an hour from the bar. Uh, so every week it's a, um, it's a chore, but it's also an excitement as well. So we have fun doing it. So what did you go through when you got here? Adversity. A yeah, a lot of matches, right? Eight, nine matches, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> did you guys have anything to say to anybody that's watching the stream right now? Yeah, thanks for the support, thanks. Dallas. Yeah. Thank you for the support. Back home in Dallas, Texas, yeah. Well, congratulations again. And Ava, Jason, back to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ayana. And once again, folks, congratulations to our new Masters champions from Dallas, Texas, the team of To The Moon. They're taking home $10,000. Folks, we appreciate you tuning in to today's coverage at this year's APA World Pool Championships. Thanks again to our friends at PoolDog.com for their support. And we will be back tomorrow with the finals of our Team Captains Championship. That's going to begin at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We hope to see you then. On behalf of all of us at the APA, thank you for tuning in.